everybody, welcome aboard. Happy Friday. It's good to see y'all. Hope you're doing well. You know, how many ca- how many catchphrases can we fit into a single opening? And I know I've, I've, I've used that one before, too. We're running out of gags here on the stream. Have to put a freaking wig on. Here. Feels bad, man. I hope you're all doing well. Um, it's getting cold in New England. The 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 winter time is definitely rolling in. And um and I still only have half a heating system. But the good news is that I think all the work is supposed to be done on Monday. And you'll notice behind me a collection of beautiful polo shirts. Because uh my closet contains the entryway into the attic. The only way to get in the attic is through my closet. Which means there can't be anything in the closet. All right, this is done. So all of my clothes are strewn about this room, and my wife decided to hang them on the curtains behind me. And I noticed when I was doing Forza earlier this week that they showed up pretty damn well. <laughs> they're pretty obvious that they're there. <laughs> Playing crazy, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, yeah. So we've we've got a uh, we've got we've got one one uh one air, one heating system in. The other heating system's just about done. Everything's supposed to be wrapped up here on Monday, I think. Uh, with just a few sort of odds and loose ends and whatnot to take care of. Shouldn't be that big of a deal at all. But um yeah, so winter is uh winter is definitely coming, man. It's definitely definitely showing up. For all you guys down in Florida complaining about it that's hot, I don't want to hear it, dude. I really don't want to hear it. <laughs> I wish it would stay just a little bit warmer. Like we went I had I I'm, I'm I kid you not, man. So we pressed the grapes last week. Not this, you know, like last Wednesday, two Wednesdays ago. And um, it was 80, like 81, 82 degrees. I had the air conditioner going because of course I did. And as of last night, the air conditioners upstairs are now out because it's too cold to leave them in. And, uh, yeah. And we've got the heat running pretty, pretty hard. So, uh, that's been my life. <laughs> it's been a, uh, it's been a, what the hell happened this week, man? Like, I'm not even sure what I did. I played. Oh yeah. We streamed, streamed some on Tuesday, played some Forza. I had a flying lesson on Monday. That's what happened. So, um, oh, I got to show you guys this. This is great. If you don't, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you should. Uh, but I went up for a lesson on Friday evening, and it was interesting because the winds a alo- oh no, it didn't sink. Oh no, it didn't sink the pictures. Hang on. The winds aloft at uh, like two thousand feet were like blowing forty knots. Like I kid you not. On the ground level, it was blowing like 10, maybe gusting 20. As soon as you got to 2,000 feet, it was it was kicking at like 35, 40 knots. We got to 5,000 feet, it was blowing almost 50 knots. So on our way over to Worcester, Reton, Massachusetts, Reton, which isn't Reton. that far away, it took, us, oh, it took us like an hour 10, hour 15. And on the way back, it took us 20 minutes. And I got a picture of this lovely, this lovely shot here. There's a lot going on here, but we're going to focus mostly on uh pulling the right picture up first of all mostly on this part down here where i was in a cessna 172 and we got it going actually it did cross 170 knots full disclosure we were in a descent here too okay so i did stack the cards in my favor but we had like a 45 knot tailwind we were cruising at like 155 160 like we were freaking hauling took us 20 minutes to get home <laughs> even with the approach so it was pretty sweet um so that, that was my that was so we ended up not streaming on monday like i promised because uh i did the lesson and i didn't get home until i got home at like 7 30 7 45 ish i didn't eat dinner until like 8 8 30 so by the time i finally sat down at the computer i'm like ah it's too late for this so if you missed it uh we did some streaming we did some did some horizon some forza horizon on wednesday or tuesday uh it was a good time <laughs> November Papa's now follow me on Twitter because you should. That's right, you should. Uh, yeah, it was a good time. Like the lesson was fun. I had to I had to can my lesson on Wednesday, so I was gonna go up again on Wednesday. But um, unfortunately, we had this like crazy front that rolled through, and we had um, uh, it went from being like fifty five sixty ish out to about fifty forty five to fifty in maybe an hour and a half. So it got real windy. Uh, rain for a little bit, and it got really windy. I think it was gusting 30, 35 at one point. I was like, you know what? I don't want to go up in that. I don't want to go flying that stuff. So uh, I decided to cancel the lesson on Wednesday. So that's my flying for the week. Um, Yeah, it's good stuff. I am going to go up 
I think on Monday. I think I should go up Monday night. I'll probably end up streaming for us uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday next week, depending on what my schedule looks like. But um, yeah, Manita's here. Good to see you. Shinra Valar, welcome aboard. Remember Papa, happy Friday. I have gas kool aids good to see you. <laughs> Play Crazy says he's sweating in places you don't even want to know about. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Angry Pilots, good to see you, man. Still 90 degrees in Florida. Dude, like what? <laughs> Eat me with all your cold weather talk. You hate it. I actually, I'm surprised that it's still 90 down there, man. It's a little late in the season for that. <laughs> so I guess we all got our problems. You can call me EK. All right, EK, how you doing, man? Happy Friday. It's good to see you. So yeah, we're here. It's Friday. I'm I'm super stoked. I'm always super stoked. I'm super stoked this week, too. We got uh, Miles2112 here for 22 months. Miles, thank you very much for 22 months. I appreciate it. Papa Reach Whiskey on. Mike here Reach for 21 on. months. So glad I can finally catch you live again. We're glad we could finally have you here again, Papa Whiskey Mike. Thank you, man. Playing Crazy's here for five months. Playing Crazy says, holy shiznit, five months. Playing Crazy, thank you very much, man. Cheers to you, buddy. Uh, Luke3333 here for six months. Luke, thank you very much for six months. Cheers to you. My buddy Sendero, welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Welcome back. I think, I think you were here before. But Mike, thank you very much for your support, man. Cheers to you, buddy. How you doing? Kiyokin here for 21 months. He says, I thought I lost my sub. Dude, it was close. You're good, though. Kiyokin, thank you very much, man. Cheers to you, buddy. Where are you at this week? Uh, Navarine here for three months. Navarine, thank you very much for your continued support. Cheers to you. Uh, I see that the stream is buffering. That's fantastic. Uh, EK, thank you very much, man. Welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Cheers to you. I do appreciate it. <laughs> Kisses, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, this is not found. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second there. Uh, this is not found. Uh, Brown Bag Code, thanks for the 35 Reach bits, on. man. These Reach are the bits on. I got off of watching ads. <laughs> Angering wants to say... Angering wanted to say butts should have left it. Okay. Oh, I'm going to say that means Android. Android wanted... Yep, okay. Autocorrect, man. Autocorrect. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, Angry Pilot here for 12 months. He says Captain and Coke. It's uh, Captain and Coke. It is 90. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Angry Pilot. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, so... Uh, R. Stratman, good to see you, Rick. How you doing? Brought back code. Happy Friday. Anybody miss? AP1776. Welcome aboard. Happy Friday. So yeah, Max got his plane this week. Oh, I, I shouldn't say it like that. Uh, Max took delivery of, um, of a Cirrus jet this week. And uh, I know that he, he, he had posted he was doing some flying and that. And um, <laughs> because of like 100 plus knot headwinds, they couldn't make it to Chicago. So they had to stop in Cleveland, gas up, and then go to Chicago, uh, which is hilarious. Now, it's, it's hilarious not because like making fun of the jet. It's just like that's the way the winds been, have been going this week up here. It's been absolutely crazy winds. So, yeah. Colin Shirley, YT, good to see you. Uh, we're going to be IFR tonight. Uh, yeah, sorry, Bob. I uh, I gave in. I had one last night. I'll have one tonight, and uh, then I'll call it quits for a few days again. <laughs> but um, I'll leave I'll leave all the pictures and everything else for Max to Max to kind of show off and whatnot. But uh, we got some stuff we got some stuff cooked up for his YouTube channel, which should be pretty cool. And um, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, the plane's the plane's beautiful, man. Yeah, the the Max needs to stream this weekend so he can show off some pictures of that airplane because it's pretty sweet looking. Uh, Serby Place, thanks for the donation, man. Snowed yesterday morning. It was 71 today. Welcome to the Northeast. <laughs> Cheers, Serby. I do appreciate the tip, man. Thank you very much, dude. All right. So here we are. We're going to do a little flying tonight. We'll do a, um, do a couple. We got a couple routes planned before we talk about the airplane. Uh, tentatively, I'm going to do three legs, but I think realistically probably only get two in because we're doing two approximately one hour legs. We're going to start up here at KGPI. This is um, Glacier Park International Airport up in whatever state this is. I don't, I don't know if this is Montana, Idaho, or Wyoming. Like, it's not Wyoming. Okay. I think, it's, I, think it's, I think it's in Montana, but it's in one of these states. So we're going to start there. We're going to make our way down, all the way down, all the way down. Jackson Hole, because Jackson Hole is a cool airport to fly into, and these are good planes for it. Uh, after Jackson Hole. Take off and then make our way down to the other cool airport in the mountains, Aspen. And uh, I'm looking forward to taking this plane into Aspen. I think it should be a good time. So uh, we'll do those two flights for sure. And if we have time for a third one, we'll make our way over to uh, Salt Lake City. Be flying on Pilot Edge tonight. So if you're on Pilot Edge, feel free to come tag along. It looks like it's a pretty quiet night on the network. So um, yeah, there's like there's <laughs> there's one other person on the network besides... Um, uh, besides Max and I, so <laughs> it's going to be one of those kind of nights. 
But more importantly, more importantly, Skyhawk 62X is here. He says 25 degrees, walk out of school 67. That's great, dude. That's fantastic. More importantly than Skyhawk, though, is this plane right here. This, this is the hot start TBM 900. Just release candidate for it. There's a few more bells and whistles, I think, that's going in with the real release tomorrow. Uh, but this is what this is what Total Rico is flying on his stream. And this is as close to uh, as close to the real thing as I can get before tomorrow. So this pre-release plane, um, we'll start off with the usual caveats. Number one, I've been on the beta team for this plane. I have flown it off and on for the past several months. Number two, it was given to me for free with the expectation that at some point I'm probably going to do exactly what we're doing tonight. Um, number three, I've already been told that I'm going to be given a free copy of this tomorrow. So let that sway you in any way that you think it's going to sway you. That being said, um, I have had the opportunity to fly this thing off and on over the past several months. Uh, I haven't put as much time into it as definitely other beta testers and other streamers have. I've intentionally held off on streaming it until it was almost ready and almost ready turned into, hey, it's going to be released tomorrow. Um, because I just, I wanted to make sure that when I showed it off and when we flew it, it, it got, it sort of got the best possible appearance. There's plenty of other guys that are showing it. That's totally fine. But, um, I, I like to, I, I like to, I like to come to a plane when it's a little bit more sort of feature complete and we can sort of sit back and enjoy it for what it is and not what we think it should be. So I'm really excited about this one. Um, I have a love affair with turboprops and it's been asked many times, Ty, if you could have any plane, what would you have? This is the plane I would have right here. If I could have any plane in the world right now, money not an issue, I would take a TBM. I think turboprops are awesome. This thing is fast. It goes high. You can fly anywhere, and it holds a lot of stuff. It is an awesome airplane. Very, very, very cool airplane. So um, I am beyond excited about the fact that this thing is coming out. Uh, beyond excited about the fact that it is feature complete and study level as it as it is, and I, I'm really excited for other people to get their hands on it and and have a chance to um, have a chance to experience it, man. So uh, I'm super stoked to be flying it tonight more than anything else. Is the weather running? The weather's not running. Hang on, we'll get that we'll get that pumped in there too. So, uh, yeah, there's not really much to say about. It. I mean, a lot of people know about this plane. You guys have seen, you know, you guys have seen like Josh and John and Max and a whole bunch of other guys fly this. I think even Matt Davies flew it at one point. We've seen Total Rico flying it, you know, numerous times. He's been flying it all week. He's actually flying it right now. If you want to go see the developer do this thing or fly this thing, he's over at twitch.tv slash Total Rico. Uh, and there's not a lot to be said about it other than it's pretty good. So Retard. Retard. I'm excited. Retard. I'm really excited. And uh, we're going to have a good night tonight. We're going to try not to blow up an engine. That's the goal. The goal is when we land for the final time, we will have not put any money into repairs to fix this airplane. Cross my fingers. Uh, Steve PHL, thank you very much for 19 months of support, man. I do appreciate your continued support, Steve. Thanks. J Pilot 136, good to see you. I'm doing very well. How are you? Aviation 317, welcome aboard. Uh, I miss anybody? I think we got them all. Ah, I fly PX3D. Good to see you. Happy Friday. Wonder if there'll be a smart co pilot config for it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they'd be able to, man. It's a pretty complex plane, but. I, I, isn't Toto working with like J snap and those guys too? Like, I don't know. I'm sure something will get worked out for, for shared co shared smart co or shared, shared cockpit stuff. <laughs> That's a bold prediction. I know. Right. A TV is too good to see you. How you doing? So yeah, let's go fly. This is the hot start TBM 900. And I am so excited to be flying this thing. Um, it looks real nice, man. Goran did a great job modeling and, texturing and everything else i mean holy crap i know it's a stream and it's tough to tell but it's pretty okay so let's uh let's see here if i grab how do i open <laughs> how do i close the door problem number one uh where is the door at there's supposed to be a door here somewhere oh, oh it's right there <laughs> Good start. Where's the click spot for the... Oh, is there, is there a... Oh, man. Admittedly, I haven't played with the door yet, so... I might be the wrong person to talk to for this stuff. You know, we're just going to do it this way. 
There it goes. Bing bong. Oh, yeah. I should turn the sounds up, shouldn't I? That's good. And then we'll grab my door. Actually, we'll grab, uh, let's see, whatever this thing is. And also close my door while we're at it. Let's do people and fuel. How do I load people and fuel? Uh... We don't need full tanks. We need about 100 per side. So let's do 100 per side. Close the fuel. Apparently you can leave the fuel doors open and that's bad. So 100 per side. Good. Uh, you can pull my chocks. Good. And as far as payload goes, well, Captain's a little heavier than that. That's eh, probably a little more accurate. We'll call that right there. Uh, I don't know. I got 20 pounds of stuff in the front cargo hold. Close that. Uh, co-pilot, we'll say we got a, well, we'll say we got a person. Co-pilot's maybe a little bit on the lighter side compared to pilot. And then we'll add a couple of light people in the back and a little bit of cargo. That's got us out of CG limits, doesn't it? All right, so let's take you away. Yeah, that puts us in limits there. Okay. So we get, we're within limits on CG. We're within limits on landing. That's good. Landing fuel, we're expecting to have probably 100 gallons, we'll say. Probably 110 gallons thereabouts. Good, good, good. Okay. So we got people. We got gas. Close the doors. Close the doors. Close the doors. And we'll go to the overhead here. So to start this plane, uh, strobe lights, nav lights, good. All we got to do is flip the bar up. That'll bring standby power on. So the backup will come on, the primary will come on, and then we can do engine monitor and all that stuff as we actually start the plane. Because we'll start it here and we'll just uh, we'll just sit and let it idle while we grab clearance. <laughs> Ground point Niner's gonna see it. HA. Can't wait to see how this thing goes. Oh, no, can't wait to see how the flight goes. We can't figure out the tour. Preparing my handy dandy deviation reports. Uh, AJ, I'm assuming you're already ready to give me a new route. So there's that. <laughs> Uh, Black BQ, good to see you, man. Links X three T R three R M E, good to see you. Happy Friday. Oral warning, okay. Oral warning's fine. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna watch the engine instruments over here. So we're gonna go ahead and go to battery. And does that bring on? This should bring on the center screens here. And once the center screen comes on, we'll turn the engine on. Edward Lang, welcome yes. aboard. Dogo okay. DR, happy Friday. It's good to see you guys. Steve one well, Steve flies a like an eight fifty, doesn't he? With definitely not a G one thousand. But yeah, Steve one can Steve one can Evo simulator time tonight. Okay, so indications are good here. We can actually run through the checklist real quick. Uh, override controls. Don't worry about that. Don't care. Strobes on, so throttles at cutoff, which it is. Uh, strobes are on, and auxiliary BP fuel switch to on. Propeller area is clear, and then we're gonna go starter switch throttle. Okay, clear. Uh, ignition auto, starter on. Oops, starter on. Starter's winding up above 13%. We can give it gas. Low idle. Hung start, hot start. Torque's coming up. NG's rising. ITT looks good. It's not going to overheat. Fantastic. Oh, we should have. We didn't do any of that. Nah. <laughs> okay, engine's up looking good. We'll go to high idle. All the numbers come up, get bigger. And we go to flight idle. Ooh, we're rolling. <laughs> Hold the brakes, engage the parking brake, and then go to flight idle. 
Yes. All right, gen on. Uh, starter's off. Auto ignition stays on. Auxiliary BP goes to auto. Uh, fuel selector to auto. AP and trims can come on. That's good. Then we move down here to this panel. Let's capture you. I know that's down there. That's where I want it. Go away. Okay, bleeds auto. Pressurization mode auto. Good, good, good. On this side, let's turn the inertial separator on. It already is. Somebody left all the anti-ice on. Great. That was me. Uh, of course, the battery is being drawn pretty hard because that's fine. Actually, that'll go that'll go away soon enough. Yeah, that'll go away soon once we get once we get the uh, the engine going better. Okay, so that's good. Uh, generator main checked. Generator, yep, yep, good, good. Autopilot, that's on. That's on. That's good. Bleed auto. AC switch uh, auto. Pressurization mode switch auto. Control selector, don't care about that. Temperature, we're not worried about that. That's good. That's good. That's good. Altimeter to southern, we'll grab that. Uh, trims, we want to line all the trims up in the green. So take off trim to the green. We're nearly max gross, so we're going to put rudder trim almost all the way to the green as well, or into the green. So we're pretty close to max gross. Eh, maybe not quite max gross. We'll come over a little bit to the left. It's good. Uh, DI system panels, fantastic. We checked that because I left it all on. Initial separators on. And generator load less than 200 amps. I don't know where the gen load's at, but I'm going to assume it's less than 200 amps. I don't know if it's that guy right there. Who cares? Pastor briefing good. Okay, so we're at the, we're at the brakes. All right. Let me grab my pen. I'll type in, I'll write down craft. And we're going to Jackson Hole. <laughs> Glacier ground, 121.6. Uh, comms over here. 21.6. And com one, mic one is on. Good. Check pilot edge real quick. Make sure that I'm actually up properly. Right now we're not. 21.6. Good. A little sanity check there since we don't hear anybody. Uh, we're going to be TBM 717 Tango Sierra. We're going to be IFR to Jackson Hole. Uh, we filed the Glacier Park 1 to Scott. Is it called Glacier Park? Glacier. Glacier Ground, good evening. TBM 717 Tango Sierra, IFR Jackson Hole. Number 717 Tango Sierra, Glacier Ground, good evening. Clear down Jackson Airport. Kelsville 1 departure, Scott. Uh, direct to Dunwar, that's Delta November Whiskey, direct. Climb via the SID, except maintain flight level 230. March frequency 133.4. Squawk 3356. Clear Jackson Hole Airport, Cali Spell 1, departure. Uh, direct Dunwar, direct. Climb via the Citics, I maintain flight level 230. Departure 133.4, squawk 3356, TBM 7 Tango Sierra. TBM 7 Tango Sierra, confirm it's Council 1, departure. Scott, transition, direct Dunwar, direct. Cal spell one, Scott transition, direct Dunwar, direct, 7 Tango Sierra. TBM 7 Tango Sierra, read back, correct. All right. Yeah, I thought I was missing transition there, but I didn't write that down. I wasn't expecting the Cal spell one. It's all right, though. Yeah, See, I told you. AJ and his reroutes. AJ loves his reroutes. All right. Come down here. Let's go flight plan. Menu. And delete flight plan. Starting at KGPI. Nope. Starting at KGPI. And then we're going to go uh, to Scott, S K O T T. Oh, I can just type it in, can I? I got a keyboard. Haha. <laughs> K. Nope. 
attack space. O T T. D D D N W. And then direct K Jack. No, not Jack. I'll never let go. And then she lets go. And none of that makes any sense. Okay, K Jack. Let me go proc. And then select departure. It's going to be the uh, Killy one. And, oh gosh, what are the winds favoring? Eh. Oh wind, oh wind, what art thou wind? 1805, that's probably, that's almost certainly favoring runway 20. Okay, good. The process of elimination there. Uh... Hmm. Oh, I put the wrong, I put the wrong, uh, uh wrong procedure. Let's try it again. <clears throat> As Chad is, I'm sure, yelling at me, you idiot, you're doing it wrong. I know. Oh. It's actually the departure that I filed. Okay. All right. All right. Yep. Yep. Here's what happened. So the GPI one is actually the Cali, Cali spell one, which is literally what I filed. Jesus Christ. I quit. It's going to be one of those kind of nights. Where's my mouse? Okay, G <laughs> Great. I know there's no runway selected. You didn't let me select one. Oh, dear God. Let's try that again. We might be flying this one by hand. <laughs> I hate you so much. I hate this simulator. Yeah, I got it. All right, whatever. So clear. Let's clear all that crap. Uh, okay, so it's actually quite simple. We're just gonna put it in ourselves because I don't know why it won't load it. That's so. That's the Laminar G one thousand, not this airplane. It's doing that, by the way. All right, Huckle. U C K L. Let's try this again. So we're going to just put this in manually. Okay, after Huckle comes Angel. A N G I L. L. Yes. And then uh, Scott. So Huckle. Angle Scott, and I'm not gonna. I don't care about the. I'll, I mean, I care about the altitude restrictions, but I'm not. I'm not super concerned about it because we're not gonna have a problem with them. So, all right, that's the departure. That's good. Um, Scott, and then D and W, and then direct. Okay, so we're good there. Fantastic. That's the. That's the flight plan. No, I'm sticking to it. Okay, so that's good. Uh, back to let's grab the weather, and then we'll go back to the checklist. Figure out what what, what what's next. Okay, 1805 knots, 10 mile visibility, clear sky, 16 Celsius, altimeter 3033. So let's put the altimeter in. Go away. Altimeter goes in here, 3033. This is why you use a GPU, by the way, so you know you don't have this engine running <laughs> this entire time, burning 32 gallons an hour sitting on the ground. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so 3033. And then we're going to go up to 23,000 feet. So let's grab the alt. Oh, boy. Let's come back up here. Twenty-three thousand, and then we'll put our squat code in. I'm going kind of out of order here. I'm just trying to, you know, get my bearing straight. Six, and transponder altitude. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so back to the checklist. Parking brakes, good. Brakes, yeah, we don't care about. We'll check the nose, the steering, throttle, flight instruments, CAS, LFB, great. Um, I'm not doing any of that. Except put the flaps to take off. Flaps going down. Good. So we're not going to do any sort of run up. I don't care. Trims are set. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, fuel gauges are fine. Auxiliary BP switches on auto. Right there. Flight instruments, we'll check those in a moment. Oh, yep. Altimeter settings, good. LFE, whatever that is, that's fine, I'm sure. Takeoff distance, I don't care about. Yep, yep, yep. Good. Okay. All right. Hey, Total Rico. Welcome aboard, man. We published the price, sixty-four ninety-five. Going live in four and a half hours. So, pretty much by the end of this, at the end of this stream, you're going to have like an hour, and then you can go buy the plane. Uh, $65. So, xaviation.com. Uh, Total Rico, do you guys have a link to the store page yet? Uh, Joku249, good to see you. Puff MTD123, welcome aboard. Iowa Scotsman, good to see you. It's already in my X-Aviation cart. Uh, Daydrew, good to see you. I didn't get a chance to make it to the meetup, dude. I'm sorry. Uh, my, my, I, my wife and I spent the night together. Um, we haven't had a lot of time to sort of hang out and, you know, be husband and wife and watch TV and do whatever. And uh, uh, I, I decided to spend the night with her instead of go out to the Twitch thing. Bill 4 Ellie, good to see it. How you doing? Okay. Uh, Toto. Oh, God. Can somebody PM me on Discord? That link. If you'd be so kind. Because I want to update Nightbot here real quick. Or post it. Thank you, Toto. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Max, Squirrel, Oxbox, Bob. Great. Here we go. All right. So we're going to edit the command here. Hot start TBM. Uh, actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to generate a short link for it because I like to track metrics. <laughs> Uh, you're going to call it hot. Uh, I would to call it HSTBM9. All right. Because I can track every time somebody clicks on that. All right. So that's out there. Good. Uh, FCC, Matt, good to see it. Everybody who I've missed, I'm sorry. Flyback 64, welcome aboard. Is this the final build you're flying? Uh, this is whatever Total Rico told me to use this afternoon. RC2, I think it was. So... It's not the retail build. I think there's more. I think the retail build is a little bit different, but it is basically the final build. Okay, so we've done. Let's just recap. We've got the transponder stuff in. We've got the glare shield set up. We've got the flight plan loaded. Uh, we've gone through all of our checklists up to and including, or up to and not including taking off. Uh, so we're good. Overhead panel. One more sanity check here. Nav, strobe. Let's go taxi light on. Gens are on. Starter, ignition, yada, yada, yada. Great. The cast shows us initial separators onto the park brake is uh, set. So let's go park brake off. Nick her forward, make sure. Yep. I said nick her forward. I don't know why I said that. That sounded like it could have been something else. Would never say that. Um, okay, so we're going to pull this into taxi range. Two zero via Bravo TBM five Mike Whiskey. Okay, they're really quiet. So I'm gonna do this. Uh, radios can come up a touch, and then we'll adjust from there. Okay, so 
What am I doing here? There's one more thing I had to do. Oh, I need to put the tower frequency in. Uh, tower is 2455. Never ground Delta 1977. Request taxi at 355. Okay. Heading over to 20, so we'll head over here by Delta. So he's off to our Max is out here somewhere. Retail build has a couple extra labels. Got it. Ground runway two five, taxi Jonathan Cordova, good to see you. Bradson, welcome aboard. Three Black Cat Music, welcome aboard. Did you say two five vehicles? Squirrel, happy Friday. How you doing, Paul? Delta miss, I missed you today, man. Five, taxi the internet, the internet was Delta the worst 97 place 97. without your stream. Place your ground TVM seven one seven Tango Sierra's jet center with the weather for taxi. Reach on. Tango Sierra, Reach on. Runway 20, taxi via Bravo. 20 via Bravo, 717 Tango Sierra. 717 Tango Sierra, cross runway 12 at uh, taxiway Bravo. Cross runway 12, taxiway Bravo, 7 Tango Sierra. Uh, Gay back, thanks for two months, man. Switch that Prime sub to a normal one, keep the good work. Excited to see the TVM in action. Cheers, my friend, I do appreciate it. I'm very excited, too. All right, we should probably set... Actually, I didn't set the better shield up, did I? So we're going to go nav mode. I'm going to start off in heading mode. Mr. Crown, Horizon 192, and Jack. we will do... Flight level change. Horizon Air 492. 124 Glacier, knots. Will be a full route clearance. Clear to Jackson Airport. Oh, boy. Kalispell, one departure. Reach on. Good. Reach on. Reach on. That's Delta November Whiskey, direct. Remix reviews. Thanks for two months of support, man. Cheers to you, buddy. I do appreciate it. March frequency 133.4, squawk 2762. Finbar, good to see you. Ernie, welcome aboard, sir. How you doing tonight? Mr. Chow, happy Friday. All right, full reclaimed Kalispell 1. Hey, it's Lumberhacks. Jax TTV, happy Friday. Hope you guys are all doing well. So if you're just tuning in, we're finding we're the Hot Start TBM 900. So don't ever send me the CSL, so we're looking at... Max is also flying it, but he's flying in a 172 model, you know. It's going to be a real fast 172. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. They, they, if you don't have the CSL, we're going to be a 172, Kelsey but it should. I think they're, they're going to have that out tomorrow. Tigers 1904, good to see you. <laughs> Chili nuts after a few beers seem like a good idea. That sounds awful. RC Flyer, welcome aboard. CSL is already out. Okay. I'll uh, I'll grab the I'll grab the CSL here after the first flight and we'll get it installed. Sky four twenty four safe first request will enable. Oh yeah, we got the new uh, the new okay, radio logic with Pilot Edge tonight too. Direct to you right now, sir. Uh, you were filed Friday Harbor at work at, and are you just direct to the field right now? Huh. Okay. Sky 424, that was removed from your routing. Um, again, it was just Orcus Direct, because that's what you would ask to refile for. Um, okay. Okay, so you're direct to Okayo. Good start now. tonight for them. Publish the 10 minutes before I went online. Ah, I got it. Got you, man. That's all good. I'll get it I'll get it uh, for the next flight. Sky 424, again, to join that. Sam Sal, or Sim Sal, welcome aboard. I actually might stream again tomorrow to afternoon, or tomorrow morning, too. Order to do that. So I can't and show it off, but we'll see. Because of that error. Um, again, you should be direct to field. Your clearance limit was after work is direct to the field. You can't just fly on to direct okay. to another point if you're, if you're not being clear to that. Park brake on. Got it. That's guy 424, stay in tension. Do you want to continue at this stage? Right, or we'll fly idle here. Switch over to tower. And departure is 33.4. 4,000, clear to RNET. Correction, not clear to NDV, runway 34 approach. Report established on the final approach course in bound. Correction, that'll be the RNAV 34 approach. Clear to RNAV approach, runway 34. Sky 424 again, cross to Ohio. Oh, yeah. 4,000. It's a real good looking plane. TBMs everywhere. It's all we're going to see. See that heat? another error that I 
caught here as well. See the heat blur of the taxi line. Oh, look at Max. Look at this guy. Golf, though, if you're flying an Arnav approach, I would assume. <laughs> oh, dear. Fucker <laughs> 70, welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Thank you for your support. Cheers. And Jack CTV, welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Cheers to you as well. I think I said cheers earlier, but cheers again. Noah Master, welcome aboard. How do you get the aircraft that'll go on sale in four and a half hours? Goes on sale four and a half hours at X Aviation Type exclamation point plane. And you get a link to the airplane. Glacier Tower, TVM 717 Tango Sierra holding short runway 20. Atomic Frog, how you doing, man? Happy Friday, sir. JP Flying, welcome aboard. Okay, AKK 1904, welcome aboard. Don't drink and fly. I won't, I promise. JP Flying, welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Thank you for your support. Cheers. Appreciate it. TVM 5 Mike Whiskey, contact Salt Lake Center. We'll do it. Oh, we got it covered, Toto. Don't we worry. Sky 424 IFR cancellation received. Squawk and maintain a VFR frequency change first. Glacier Tower, TVM 717 Tango Sierra holding short runway 20. 717 Tango Sierra, Tower Runway 20, line up and wait. It'll be short delay here. I need to build some internal spacing to uh, Jackson on Raider. All good. Hold the short runway 20, uh, TBM 7 Tango Sierra. 7 Tango Sierra, runway 20, right. line up and wait. Clear left. Line up and wait, runway 20, uh, 7 Tango Sierra. Number 5 Mike Whiskey, Salt Lake Center, Raider contact. Climb and maintain. Did I say hold short? Order. Whoops. Uh, we'll pulse it. Go landing lights. Go landing lights. Landing lights. Number two zero identified. Okay, lights. Camera. Uh, good, good. Mm, there's the other frequency. Good. In action. Good, good. Set. Set. Denver Tower, Delta 1977. All right, we're ready to go. Delta 1977, Denver Tower, wind 030 at 6, runway 25, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff 25, Delta 1977, Captain Bill, 46, uh, 3C, welcome aboard. Nick's Fu, welcome aboard. Cup holders should have their own, is there other cup holders? No, oh, that's a throttle. I am looking for cup holders right now. <laughs> Oh, that's my headset. The synthetic vision is awesome, man. Like, that might be the coolest thing to come out of this airplane is this, this synthetic vision. I'm looking forward to seeing Toto get it in more airplanes. Oh, that's the throttle friction lock. Got it. Back of the pedestal underneath the fuel tank selector. Uh, here? No, we're not going to pull that. Oh, it's right there. Aha. Yeah. No, 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 no. Come back. Come back. I do not want to pull that. Okay.
Nope. Leave the coffee out. Steve needs his coffee. Number seven Tango Sierra, runway two zero, cleared for takeoff. Give for takeoff for me two zero seven Tango Sierra. On departure two zero zero to thirty eight four hundred eighty feet, direct Huckle. Three two zero zero. Okay, we did lights, camera, action. Let's get out of here. Brick set, park, break. Here we go. I have a tough time controlling this for some reason. Blame the pilot. I think I need to turn off like the control dampening stuff. All right, positive rate. You're up. Yeah, I was having issues with that earlier too, ground handling. What's up? Number seven tango here, contact Salt Lake Center. Salt Lake Center, seven tango here. We'll see it. Salt Lake City Center, TBM seven one seven tango Sierra, four thousand six hundred climbing flight level two three zero via Glacier, uh, Cali one. Number seven one seven. Tango Sierra, Salt Lake Center, Raider, contact, climb and maintain flight level 310. Climb and maintain flight level 310, 7 Tango Sierra. Alright. 310. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the, the, the high speed, like, control stuff off. I don't know if it has anything to do on the ground, but I have my own, I have my own curve set that I'm kind of used to. I think that's causing me issues in the ground. All right, so let's go checklists. Uh, well, okay, climb speed 124 knots, good. Trims are fine, yaw dampers on, lights are as required. Throttle is set, and we'll keep pushing the throttle up as we climb. Actually, we could turn the yaw damper off. Our initial, sorry, initial separator can come off. That's going to raise the torque here once that comes off. Fairly dramatically. Good, 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 good. Should bump it up here in a second. There it goes. Separators off. Done fiddling with that. Uh, pressurization is happening. Good. After takeoff, gear up, lights out. Make sure lights are staying where they're at. Uh, gears up, flaps in, indicate. Yep, we're good. Up we go. Delta 1977, contact Denver departure. I see Flyer. Thanks for the bits, man. Appreciate it. Sixness, welcome aboard. Our genus, welcome aboard. Good to see you. This plane's awesome. Serious Max, good to see you, man. <laughs> it's not coffee time yet. Hour before, hour before, uh, hour before landing. It's coffee time. J10GB, good to see you, Justin. How you doing? Assassin, welcome aboard. Anybody else I miss, I apologize. So one of the things to keep in mind as you're climbing this is your torque, as you're climbing, your torque is going to drop pretty pretty dramatically on the way up. So you're constantly going to be adding more throttle. 
and um, that's because the air is getting thinner as you uh, as you climb. So I'm going to do map topographical. Yeah. Next red. There we go. I don't need to see the terrain right now. This thing climbs like a rocket too, which is great. Until you get to like the upper, about the upper 20s, I think things start to slow down a little bit. Obviously. But we're going all the way to 310. We're going to make it. Uh, watch YouTube VODs a few times. Uh, 1AM is a bit late to catch streams normally. Insomnia coming in handy for once. Well, they're good to have you here then. Cheers, buddy. <laughs> Jay Patel, just good to see him. We have not burned an engine yet. There's still plenty of time tonight, though. I promise. Retard. 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 Second Officer Steve, thank you very much for 14 months of support. I do appreciate it. Cheers to you, buddy. Thank you very much. That, I mean, the angle of attack on this thing is just nuts. Like that's kind of the thing that gets me the most. I notice it's like, e like even flying it, flying it before. Like we're climbing it. Remember, we're climbing it VY right now, or yeah, VY. Um, but we're climbing at a 12 degree angle at 2150 feet per minute. Like this thing is just like going. Denver Center, 133.67. Retard, retard, mm -hmm. retard. Take it easy, Atomic. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Was it 2002? Welcome aboard. Or thanks, I'm sorry. Was it 2002? Thanks for seven months of support, man. Cheers to you. Up to 360. Uh, Louis and Jay get to see it. Sounds like a toy plane. Well, that's how they sound, though. Get that, you get that buzz into the prop going. Manitis, good to see it. I set my yaw control response to 50%. It seems to make a world of difference on the ground. I'll check it out. That's, I, actually, I think I have the control response set to 50% uh, across the board. Is it, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to mess around with it. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to make it work. Just got to get the right feel. Like this plane's got a ton of torque. And that's that's part of the issue. A torque machine. Okay, we crossed standard. We're across uh, eighteen thousand, so we'll go standard. Just keep one hundred twenty-four knots on the way up. This is what the checklist. Like this is what the P, uh, the the um the the handbook actually re recommends too. Is flying one hundred twenty-four knots. Like, apparently there is no cruise climb. It's just climb at VY, get to altitude, profit. Sir Topper, good to see you. Attack Jake, welcome aboard. Has nearly two and a half times the power in the engine that the prop can take. <laughs> That's true. Second Officer Steve, welcome aboard, man. Happy Friday. It's going to be $65. Sixty-four ninety-five or something. Sixty-five bucks. Exclamation point taxi, plane. You get a link to the uh, a link three to the store zero, page. Actually, it is kind of crazy. These these engines do have a ton of horsepower, don't they? Like way more horsepower than you uh, than you could work with. Oh, I got to start that already. Lots of people climb at higher speeds. POH is a bit over enthusiastic. Feel free to climb to 150 knots. All right, we'll do the next one 150. Retard, retard, I like the 124 retard. knots though, man. 2100 feet all or 2100 feet per minute all the way to 31,000 feet sounds fine to me. Josh, thanks for 22 months, man. Climbing like a homesick angel. Uh, runs like a cheetah on cocaine. <laughs> Total we trust. Good evening. 
<laughs> Cheers, my friend. Thank you very much, Josh. How you doing, buddy? Hi, I'm Marcus. Good to see you, man. Hello from Boston. The Boston area. Code Toad, welcome aboard. What's a cruise speed on the TBM? Three, about 320, 320 is true. 310 to 320 true where we're, where we're going. Eh, can't quite go full power yet. Reach on, reach on, reach on. B Mesa nineteen seven twenty one. Thank you very much for your support. Welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Cheers. Appreciate it. Same as a vision jet, says Max. They are remarkably similar planes, aren't they? Taco eighty three. How you doing, man? Has been a while. Happy Friday. Hey Max, have you shared any plane, any pictures of your uh, of your airplane yet? At this steep climb all the way to three one zero, you can actually outrun the cabin climb. Oh, I see. Ew. Yeah, we could do that, couldn't we? All right. Well, let's uh, we'll bump the speed down then. We'll bump it to one fifty. Toto's advice: go to one fifty. Otherwise, we might outrun the cabin climb and make the pressurization do bad things. Although I think it's it's still doing all right. But we'll climb. We'll endeavor to climb at 124 initially, then 150 after that. From now on. Uh, 2104 contact North Cal departure. You'd hit DP Max before 310. And man, we never want to hit DP Max. That's for sure. <laughs> I got a 175 of Sailor Jerry's and a bottle of Sambuca with my name on it for the weekend. I don't know what either of those things are, AJ. I suspect maybe I need to have some in my life at some point, though. It's fantastic. Must be a blast to fly. First time catching the stream live and watching replays for a while. Well, thanks, man. Welcome aboard. This plane's pretty fun, yeah. It's, um, I love turboprops, so I, I, I wish I could have put more time into it in the beta. Um, it's just I my summer was crazy and there were lots of other planes to fly so I told Toto as soon as this thing comes out for real we're gonna fly it and here we are <laughs> never go full DP max <laughs> owning a TBM would almost guarantee DP max <laughs> Yeah. I hit DP Max once. It was a hell of a night. Now we're talking. I'm glad you guys picked up on the... Uh, I'm glad you guys picked up on what I was throwing down there, right? <laughs> Not that I was being at all subtle. You know. Am I streaming into the wrong game? Well, I'm streaming under X-Plane 11, aren't I? I can fix that. Should be it should be flight simulator X because you know that's how we roll. Because Twitch won't give us a damn category. There we go. That's fixed. All right, up we go. Oh, man, it looks so good. Sir, what I need to do is the tower with call more like T0 for takeoff. Alaska 2104, climb and maintain, climb level 100, go. Sorry, I need a screenshot. I know it's kind of loud. That's a pretty good screenshot. All right, so we're maxing the throttle now. This is pretty much all she's got. We only got 2,000 feet to go.
A migrating box. Thank you for the bits, man. Hey, time managed my first week of not smoking. Feeling better for it. Congratulations, dude. That's huge. Treated myself to Orbex, True Earth, England South. Uh, runs nice with GA planes on high settings. Stock 4770, GTX 970, thankfully. Awesome, dude. Well, congratulations on the week of not smoking. Huge. Thank you very much for the bits, man. Cheers. I'll tell you, man, that's not easy. I made it, um... Well, I made it most of the week without having to, having a drink, but... I, th I think drinking, drinking, drinking beer and whatnot is a lot different from smoking. Having done both. Um, that's awesome, dude. I'm super, super jazzed for you. Next week, you gotta tell me you made it two weeks, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna keep you on the hook. Favorite things I did, totally did, was uh, saving the state. Always wanted the sim to save the plane exact way it was in the sim where I left it. Yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. I think I think I'm gonna learn to like that. Um, that's a feature I was kind of on the fence about. It's not usually my, my kind of thing, but I think it's one of those things that I'll I'll probably learn to uh, learn to really like. The uh, the save states, and the ability to share airplanes could be fun too. If you got a group of guys who fly, you know, who fly different, different schedules and whatnot. It might be fun to, um, uh, it might fun to have, be fun to have those save states where you're, you're, you know, sharing a plane. Flat level three, one, zero. Speed this sucker up. Start making some progress. Here we go. The only thing it's missing is that satisfying, like, pulling back of the throttle once you get to altitude. That's always a fun, a fun turbo prop thing to do. <laughs> Spent the last 30 minutes unplugging a toilet. How's your Friday going? A lot better than that, it seems. <laughs> Damn it, Todd, you left the battery on again. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be, it'll be interesting. We'll Is it William? I thought he was doing Can't Atlas wait. Cloud tonight. <laughs> Max. <laughs> Don't speak of bird strikes. Had my had a turkey buzzard come up 50 feet from hitting me on landing on my Discovery flight. Freaked right out. <laughs> See if I was like, holy crap, did you see that? Yeah, that's funny. I've almost gotten birds a few times. Max is getting ice cream, I bet. That's what he does when he steps off the frequency. Little known fact. All right, let's, uh, let's see. So we could do our cruise checks. Uh, throttle is adjusted. Pressurization, we checked that. It's good. Gauges are good. Uh, cruise parameter, sure. De-ice, great. Yeah, yeah, checks. Cruise checks, good. All right. Off we go. find the right camera angle here. I can't believe how big this screen is here in the middle. Like, you get used to seeing these little tiny displays, and you get to see this monster here in the center. It's just like, whoa. Turkey buzzard is a buzzard you can eat on Thanksgiving. I like it. I approve. My wife and I went out for ice cream... Wednesday night. It was really cold out and I looked at her and I'm like after dinner I'm like you want to get some ice cream? And she looks at me and says I hate you. And yes. So we ended up uh, watching an episode of uh, uh, we watched an episode of the show we're watching. I forget the show. And then uh, made our way to the ice cream store. Got some ice cream at like 9 o'clock at night when it was 35, 40 degrees outside. It's great. Is Max getting ice cream a real thing or a euphemism? Dude, uh, so Artist Simulation, happy Friday. Max loves, loves ice cream. He really does. Like, and it's not a euphemism. He actually loves ice cream. So I think half the time when he steps away, he's actually getting ice cream. 
Ice cream in the winter is awesome. It doesn't melt in your hands. See? It's, it's fantastic. Total Rico says it doesn't feel that big IRL. <laughs> uh, the Sim makes stuff appear bigger than they really are. You step into the real plane, you realize how cute and tiny the yoke is. Yeah, exactly. Is this Carinado? Negative. It said, hot start. Hot start TBM 900. It's coming out tomorrow. $65. X-Plane Geo, thanks Reton. for 15 months Reton. of support. Cheers to you, buddy. I appreciate it. Rice Takama, how you doing, Trey? Have some ice cream cake, and I'll be eating it tonight and freezing in this freezing out, dude. Is it... Wait, wait. Is it the ice cream cake that has, like, the little, the little, like like oreo chunks or whatever like the cookie chunks in it with the fudge like an, like a like a dairy queen ice cream cake because that's that's awesome that's the good stuff uh it's me Grizz. good to see you welcome on board <laughs> this was carinata you would hear the clicking noise yeah this is carinata there'd be a lot of things going on this camera out. There we go. Actually, that's... Here's what I've been doing. I mean, view, external, uh... Oh, yeah, I haven't used... Never mind. We got the right ones here. Look at the nose-down attitude it's got going. It looks mean. The freaking size of the nose on these things is crazy, though. It's a carvel, but yes. Okay, that works. I don't care what kind of I don't care what kind of ice cream cake it is, as long as it's got the chocolate crunchy bits and the fudge. That's all that matters. Do a flyby. We've done a couple of them. I'll do another one. We'll do another one here. Yeah. Do one more. That's so good. One more from the other angle. <laughs> it's good stuff. Strobes are good. We got the strobes on. Don't worry. They're doing strobe things. I'll be 900. Good to see you. Happy Friday. Be the gamer 2 YT. Welcome aboard. How's it going tonight? Uh, happy Friday. Is it too cold down in Rhode Island for ice cream? Or it's way too cold. It's never too cold for ice cream, dude. Max. So Max came up and visited me one time. He brought actually one of the PE controllers at the time on, I think it was New Year's Eve. And it was freezing. Like it, New Year's Eve was that last year was the middle of like the two weeks of never getting above freezing weather that we had. And uh, we went out for ice cream that day. Yeah, snow on the ground, uh, probably about 20, 25 degrees, and we went out for ice cream. What's the ground speed? We're doing 366 over the ground right now. So and we've got um, we've got a 39 knot tailwind. We're doing 365-ish. So that puts us at right around uh, three... It's right around 325. 325 true is what we're doing. So, yeah, it's it, this thing's this thing's quick. It's a pretty fast plane. Very, very quick. <laughs> Anyone want to buy a slightly used scare out of PC12? Yeah. Blake C, good to see you. Fly bad 64. Welcome aboard. Um yeah, it, it, it like it's unfortunate. Like this, this pretty much puts a nail in the Epic E one thousand. Uh, definitely puts a nail in the, the PC twelve for me. Not that I've flown that in X point eleven, but like I love the E one thousand. But this is this is going to take its place for sure, um, without question. Space Dandy, Space Dandy, it's good to see you. It looks determined to fly there wherever there is. <laughs> yeah, it does. Serious gamer, happy Friday. Bad turbulence. Thank you very much for the bits, my friend. Cheers to you, buddy. Appreciate it. 
How much is the real one of these planes? I don't know. Toto, do you know how much these things are in the real world? $4 million. One of these planes will run you back a smooth $4 million. 3.7. There you go. Tech Claw, happy Friday. And do you think you can find one of these things used? Would you want to buy one of these things used? And why is it so quiet right now? Not a lot of people on the network at the moment. Oh, yeah, there's like four of us in Western U.S. actually flying. Hmm. Cirrus Jet is a better value. What is the... I wonder what the range is. Like... At max gross, what are the, what's the range for each one of those planes? Remember, Ma Max was posting about not being able to make it to uh, Chicago with some stiff headwinds from New York. And I bet I wouldn't be surprised if you could have done it in the TBM. But I don't know, actually. I got to read some to PE. I miss it so much. Absolutely, man. Mick it's good to see you. Stop yawning. I can't see my drink. I'm sorry. God, did you say yawn? I'm going to yawn. Oh, look. Shirts. <laughs> 1,200 versus 1,700. Yeah, it might, so that might not be that big a deal anyway. It depends on, like, it, it depends on... Yeah. I guess it depends on, like, max payload. So if you had five people in each one of the airplanes, how far could you go? Because a Cirrus jet can probably go just as far, if not further, if there's one person in there and full fuel. Uh, TBM full power range is 1,200 nautical miles. Long range cruise is 1,600 nautical miles. With uh, That's with MBAA IFR reserves. Got it. I think people are already lobbying for the TBM 900 to be added to FS Economy. TBM 5 whiskey's back. TBM 5 whiskey's good. I'm sure it'll get added at some point. Honestly, just fly a 700 or, or a 750 or an 850 on FS Economy and you're fine. Like, the 750 is a little slower, but it, it still works. Maximum I can do the SF-50 and next plane 11 right now is 1,000 nautical miles. I see. Marlos B, happy Friday. It's good to see you. How you doing? Anybody else I miss? Hello? TBM 850 is a near-perfect match on FS Economy. There you go. So th what's the difference between the 850 and the 900? Is it avionics? Is there more than that? Because it's also a 930, right? Same engine, differences were only some fuselage refinements between them. I have N74, happy Friday, good to see you, how you doing? Or 900 or 910, maybe not 930. <laughs> What's the difference between the 850 and 50. <laughs> I approve artisan simulation. <laughs> All right, got a half hour to go. Looking good. Jackson Hole Wizard 2807. That's what I see. Retard. Retard. So we'll probably get one niner because that's what we always get. Euphoric Rager, thanks for 10 months. Double digits can't stay for long. Have a great stream. Thank you very much, man. Cheers to you, buddy. Appreciate it. The 850, 900, 910, and 930 all have the same engine with the same top power. Okay. The 930 has a touchscreen. Swanee 39, welcome aboard. OS Eagle, happy Friday. How you doing? I suspect an imminent shortage of used 850s in FS economy. Dude, they're all going for like $1.2 million right now. Like every 850 I saw today was going for over a million dollars. Have you heard about the 767 uh, version 2? I heard about it. I heard some people talking about it. I don't really know. I don't know anything about it beyond that, though. Um, light on the details. Yeah. All right. Let's do some... Uh, 
Mm, let's do some planning here. So Jackson Hole, so we think we're going to be landing on one niner. Uh, there's an ILS Yankee, ILS Zulu going in there. There's an RNAV GPS. There's also an RNAV RMP. Hmm. And all of them suck for the direction that we're coming in from. Right, we've 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 been vectored to Dunmore anyway, so we're flying to Dunmore no matter what. So we could fly the we could fly the ILS Zulu. We could also just fly the damn Arnav in there too. Might be what I do. I might ask for the Arnav RMP Zulu if they'll give it to us. I mean, the, the, the weather's amazing, so we might even just get a visual, a vector for a visual, but it's kind of weird when you're coming in from this side because you've got these mountains here that got to vector you around, so they'll, they'll probably have to take us, like, up around Jackson Lake here and then bring us down, but they might be able to drop us in and just give us a visual approach. Depends on what he wants to do. I'm sure AG's already got something in mind. He's a professional. Cliff 9464, good to see it. They say it's hard to fly with no yoker pedals. Uh, it is very difficult to fly. It's not impossible, but it is difficult. A50 has an older airframe design. The 900 and later are all the same airframe, just different airframes. Okay. Or different avionics. <laughs> Makes more sense. True the Cessna pilot, good to see it. How you doing? See you next week. How much to bribe you to see the new plane? Uh, unable. P3 Ron, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Uh, P3 Ron has a TBN up for sale in FS Economy. Bargain price of only 950k. I got 150k. I can give you that. <laughs> I see 900 takeoff every day from my home field. It takes off like a rocket ship. Dude, they're amazing. I would love to have a TBM so bad. Like, it would be such an awesome plane to own. Good to see you streaming. Good to be streaming, man. Happy Friday. Nice to see your call sign next to the MCP. Yeah, that's. I think that's a cool feature. You can you can customize the call sign on the airplane, so it shows up... Uh, you, 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 like this plane, this is Steve-O's air, Steve airplane, but it can have any tail number on it. And it's reflected on the back and on the, uh, uh, on the front there too. Oh, you got the outline of the text and everything. That's cool. Nice. You pick up a vision jet or a TBM. Do I take the TBM dude? I'm sorry. Like the vision jet I'm sure is awesome, but Given a choice of any airplane, I take I take turboprop. I mean, I'll never own either one of them, so it's not a big deal. But I would totally take a TBM. <laughs> if you want to make a VA with a call sign PDMG, I like it. You can also use your own custom font. Ooh. Does this thing show the top of descent? If we programmed it to, yeah, it would. Um, right now, it's not going to because I don't, I don't have any. There's no altitude restrictions set up in the uh, flight plan, so there's no like there's no VNAV profile to, to 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 worry about. Like if I wanted to, I could say, all right, let's look at um, the ILS Yankee says cross Dunwar at or above eleven thousand feet. So we could we could put like I could say, okay, um, I don't know. Let's say we wanted to do what is the so the MDA is 15,000 feet um, to the northwest. Thir we'll say 13,000 feet. So if we wanted to say, okay, oh, down to the... If we wanted to take it down to the MDA, I could say, all right, let's go Dunwar at... Uh, can I just do one? Nope, that doesn't work. Dunwar 13,000. Good. Enter. So now I can then come down to the VNAV profile. Let's say we want a two and a half degree. Roger, descend at pilot's discretion, maintain level 240. 
Descend the uh, PD down to 240. So if we wanted to, if we wanted to get a two and a half degree descent, we need to be at 1,604 feet per minute right now. So. Uh, <laughs> See ya. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So two and a half degrees would give us 16, 1,605 feet per minute. And our top of descent is now at 12, 12 minutes, 45 seconds. So that's a way that you can get um, that you can get a top of descent marker. Um, so say Dunwar, 13,000 feet. You have to have an altitude restriction in. And then you get your act active waypoint, the next restriction. Set either your FPA or set your target uh, feet per minute. And then uh, down you go. So now we have a 13,000 foot restriction here. And as we get a little bit closer to our top of descent, we'll see a we'll see a VNAV marker show up here on the right side. I learned that trick from Max. Um, all the all the G one thousand planes will behave the same way. Mama Gator Gaming, welcome aboard! Happy Friday. Cliff, take it easy. Thank you very much. My real potting's going great. Thanks for asking. Uh, and if you set a lower altitude, the alt cell knob and press VNAV, it'll start to descent automatically at top of descent. Yeah. Actually, I didn't have, I had a problem get that going earlier, Toto, but I was sure it was pilot error. But yeah, we can, we can hit the VNAV button and we'll start down automatically, but we've not been given any altitudes to start down at. Do I have a girlfriend? I'm married. No, I don't have a girlfriend. My wife would be upset. <laughs> Mexican head ripper, welcome aboard. Am I currently using the headset feature? I'm not. I could hit the headset button. I never really cared for the way that all the headset stuff muffles the sound. Because then, like, I have it... So, here, here's the thing, Okay. Let's call this a reasonable volume. I go outside. That's loud. Quiet. Loud. So I'd rather have it where people can hear. Uh, where people can hear what's going on. So I, I, the headset stuff is cool. I'm sure there's some people that get into it, but I've never. It's never been my thing. Sim Captain Mike, welcome aboard. How you doing? Have you tried Dolby Atmos with X Plane? Uh, no, haven't. Is that a thing you can do? Now you have 230 co-pilots to help you. <laughs> We're not going to call them co-pilots, Mick. We're going to call them backseat pilots. <laughs> Is there a study level vision jet in X-Plane? No, case closed. Touche. <laughs> Goran would make such a pretty shoot. <laughs> Do you want to be a real pilot? I already am a real pilot. I'm a private pilot. I don't want to be a professional pilot. No, that's what you're asking. I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy doing what I do. Being a fat, dumb idiot. Yeah, I got my I got my PPL, got my private li or my private pilot's license about a year ago. Working on my instrument rating. I'm three and a half hours away from my instrument rating, and there's a solid chance that it's not going to happen before the baby comes. Like, just looking at the schedule and sort of when I can get in and when I can get with my instructor, it's going to be cutting it real close. We'd love to have a good SF-50 next plane 11. Default is flyable, but not good. It's a favorite plane in the whole wide world. Nice. We have to, do you definitely have to work with Max? Check it out, man. If you see it before I do, I'm going to be a little upset. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Get Max to fly to Norwood or something. I'll come down and see you guys. Gonna need 58 TBMs to carry all the viewers. I like it. My fleet of TBMs to carry my my fan base. 58 TBMs at four million a pop. That's um four times 58 because my math is hard. That's 232 million dollars to pay for all those TBMs. Yeah, I like it. Similar to C1, uh, C-17 Globemaster. I don't think there are any right now. If there was a decent one, I might consider it, but I don't think there's a decent one for X-Plane, so it ain't going to happen. Uh, there's an SS-50 at or Norwood. I see it a lot while golfing at the club next to the airport. Nice, dude. We can charge it. 
Put it on my card, sir. Might be cheaper to just get a passenger airliner. Oh, it totally would be. You get a free hat with the purchase of a TBM. <laughs> Clorix, welcome aboard. How you doing? If I win the Mega Millions tonight, I'll have a spare $232 million to mess around with. <laughs> what, what better way... What better way to spend your money than to make sure that TBM has their airplane orders booked out for the next, like, five years? I approve. Smithy Chris, why do you have clothes hanging on your curtain rod? <laughs> so... All right. Sorry, calling Seattle, Center, calling Seattle Center, say again. AJ was asleep at the wheel. Why do I have clothes hanging on my hammer? That's a good... Or my curtain rod. That's a good question. So... I'm in the middle of major renovations on my home. Uh, we're installing a brand new heating and air conditioning system. And in order for them to access the attic where they can run duct work and put a unit up there and everything else, they need to go in through my closet. My closet also has the access ha hatch for the attic. part of what you're logging into the network with. I know that's featured on the back of tail numbers, but that should not be logged. You should not be logging into the network as our APC software does not recognize that character. Okay. Okay, I can find so far uh, over the past periods connecting, but um, I'll make sure not to do that again next time. Hey, Papa Hotel Kilo, India Mike Roger. If you're able to reconnect to the network just with that call sign, no dashes included, and uh, to resubmit your flight plan, I'll be able to work your clearance for you. Interesting. Uh, sorry, I was listening to what they were saying. Local, so, India, we're doing all the renovations. Uh, my closet's being used to hold the ladder so people can get up and down into the attic. I have no closet at the moment. Thus, my shirts are hanging on the, um, yeah, the curtain rod behind us. And my whole, my whole office right now is complete just, like, there's, st whoops, there's stuff everywhere. It's, it's really, like, starting to bother me. <laughs> but the work is supposed to be done this week, and I can have my closet back, and I can put everything away. But yeah, for now I can't do it. Good question though, I like that. <laughs> TBM two three two cleared to land number two three two after TBM two three one, yeah. TBM flight of two hundred and thirty two. Checking in. Excuse me? You heard me. Five four zero six maintain VFR. I take an Antonov over a Globemaster. Yeah. Uh the thing didn't go off. Hang on. Aileron's neutral. Thank you for eight months, man. The alert's broken. <laughs> Great. Aileron's neutral. Thank you very much for eight months of support, my friend. I do appreciate it. I don't know why the alert's not working. Cheers, buddy. I'm sure it'll come through at some point. <laughs> Lumber hacks, good to see you, man. Q's doing her best to run you down. Top Hotel, Kilo India Mike Raider contact, three five miles south of North Bend, altitude. 361, 361, 355. Yeah, you ain't catching up to us anytime soon, Lumber. We're doing the same speed, you know. But I'm sure AJ can work that spacing out a little bit. <laughs> the thing didn't go off. Every Airbus pilot ever, <laughs> says the Airbus pilot. <laughs> I approve. Uh, X-Plane will be sold as an add-on to the TBM 900. <laughs> I approve. It's probably going to be our turn for a descent here soon. So we're not too far behind Max. Whoever signed on as 2211 Mike, you're missing the November in front of your, uh, in your call sign. If you're logged in at Jackson Hole, better fix your call sign before you talk to AJ. <laughs> He's going to make you know that you're wrong. What's our ETA? 17 minutes right now. 
Who made this TBM? Not the same one as Total Rico, is it? No, this is this is Total Rico's TBM. Hot Start. Hot Start's the name of Toto's uh, Toto's company. And Toto's development studio. Whatever Toto's calling it. Uh oh. I think I upset it. Alright, we'll just not zoom out any further than that. I was having some frame rate issues earlier when I was flying this thing, but it's running nice and smooth now, so we'll go with it. Five mic grid identify level three one zero. Okay, we got two and a half minutes to our top of descent. I could I could increase with your light chop in the sense so far. Thanks, Max. We could increase the descent of pilots discretion maintain flight level two four zero on speed wise TBM traffic ahead reporting light uh, occasional light uh, turbulence in the descent. P D two four zero uh TBM seven tango zero. Forgot what kind of plane I was in for a second there. Now nah, we'll leave it at two and a half. Fifteen hundred feet per minute, there we go. All right, minute and a half, or two minutes till we'll start down. So we can go down to 24,000 feet. And I should be able to hit the VNAV button. V path, and it should start down automatically. If I've done it right. If I haven't done it right, please tell me. Real question for me is, do I buy the TBM tomorrow morning knowing full that I'm traveling the next two weeks at work and can't fly it or wait till I get home? Oof. Can you fly it at all this weekend? This you're not found. Andre K boss, welcome aboard. How you doing, man? How was doing the transition training to the S50? Dude, it wasn't transition training. He had to get a full on types type rating. Like Max has Max has been studying for this this type rating for months now. No time. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Hazid, welcome aboard. As a beginner who would like to get into FSX and VATSIM, where would I start? Um, I would start with, like, I think VATSIM's got some training materials out there, but, like, the Pilot Edge training stuff, even if you're not going to find Pilot Edge, is still worthwhile. Training.pilotedge.net. Uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos. Ask a lot of, you know, like, like, be very inquisitive, not on the radios, but be just inquisitive. You know, ask yourself questions. Make sure that you kind of know what's going on. And the first time that you start flying on the network, go find a nice remote tower where there's not a lot going on. Um, find a nice quiet tower or a nice quiet center. So like Vision Jet 5 Mike Whiskey, we're uh, 26 <laughs> 2 for 24, like Chuck. Rear 5 Mike Whiskey. It's like a Star Vision Roger. Jet now. And uh, verify current information for Jackson. All right, let's see if this thing, this thing should start down now. Here's our vertical uh, path coming in. Pop, popped up on the ATIS, uh, but uh, we'll uh, plan uh, Visual 1 9. Is it going to do it? There it goes. We got a VNAV path. Oddly enough, we're slowing down as we descend. That's interesting. Why are we t slowing down as we're reach descending? On, reach on, reach on. Uh. Oh, mid the winds might be shifting. Are they? No. We've got power. Torques are coming up. Ground speed is staying steady. But the indicated airspeed's coming down. Yeah. Oh, good. Something's broken. I'm 190 knots indicated right now. I'm not sure what's going on here. Pedo and static heat is on, so icing shouldn't be the issue. Yeah, so looking at the backup, uh, the backup instrument here, we're showing 190 which is probably incorrect. 
Oh, hello. Okay. Seems to have figured itself out. Oh, good. That was weird. Cheeky PE, it's possible, yeah. Somebody's screwing with my instruments. <laughs> the developer's sitting here like, it's not my plane, dude, I promise. I didn't do it. <laughs> We do have to watch the torques on the way down because as the torques as the torques were decreasing on the way up, they're gonna increase on the way down. So you gotta be ready to pull power as you're as you're descending. Um when you're not descending at a at a uh, uh, at a uh, flight level change mode. Contact, Hall Lake Center, 1325, Reach on, on. Reach on. Approach, Reach on. Right, 3325. Yeah, let's grab the weather real quick. Jackson Hole Weather, 2807 Austin, visibility clear skies, 14 Celsius, September 3041. Delta 1977, following approach. When you check in, initial contact with approach control. We need your altitude leaving. Verify that you're descending to altitude 1, 6,000. And also, ideally, we're looking for the ADIS information, initial contact. Tango is current. Advise when you've got that. Expect the ILS runway 34 right approach. Nineteen seventy-seven. Like so, I say, Senator TBM 717 take a zero flight level two four five descending flight level two four zero. Number seven one seven take a zero. Salt Lake Center, Roger. Continue descent at pilot's discretion. Maintain a one six thousand Jackson altimeter three zero four one. Advise when you have the current ADIS information. Golf there and say approach request will enable. Uh, four one, and we have the uh, we have the weather, and we'll take whatever approach you want to give us. Seven take a zero down to uh, one six thousand. We're sending things here. Okay, Roger. Uh, plan the visual approach to runway 19 here if you don't have another request. Yeah, that's fine with us. Uh, seven tickets here. Okay. I'm okay with the visual okay. approach. 77 descend via the Lehigh 5 arrival. Okay. We're still descending. We're still doing well. Uh, Mike Whiskey advised Jackson Airport inside to be 2 o'clock position, 3 5 mile. So he's giving him Jackson Airport. Jackson is 11807. So 18. Oh seven. There we go. Uh, GT Boy, thank you very much for three months of support, man. Says sending you three months of love. I appreciate it. Cheers to you. Looks like we fixed this thing now. So Kung Pao Cow, 11. Thank you very much for your support, man. Welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Reach on. Cheers to you. I appreciate Reach on. it. Reach on. Aileron's neutral. Let me, well, let me re refire. I, I'll fix this. We can fix it. Damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor. All right. Then we got Aileron's neutral who didn't fire. Now we got it. All right. Aileron's neutral. Reach Kung Pao Cow. GT Boy. Thank you Reach guys on. all very much for your support. Cheers to you. Calling for clearance on a Boise no flight plan on file. Oop. Torque. All right, so down this ridge here, we're going to be looking for the airport. Still a reach ways on, to go. Reach on, reach on. But it's out there somewhere. Actually, it's like right there, if I recall. Probably that's probably it there. There. Vegas Flyer, happy Friday. XP Aviator, welcome aboard. Uh, what plane was on the org store for $100,000 so it wouldn't sell? Probably at flight, one of the flight factors. Padawan, good to see you. Welcome aboard. Two hours and ten minutes. Coming up. It'll be on sale soon. Sterling Wine, good to see you. Did I hear Jackson Hole? Absolutely you did. We're, we're flying Jackson Hole right now. 
on Pilot Edge. And then after that, we're going to go to Aspen. Set landing field elevation. System FMS L LP. Okay. Uh, let's see here. System FMS LFP. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Pressurization's all wonky. Ah, I see. Right. All right, it's cool now. I got the hiccups. I don't know why I had the hiccups. Get rid of the hiccups. Put the plane in your cart now. Uh, yeah, you'll be able to buy it soon enough, guys. Retard, retard, retard. Okay, our altimeter setting is 41. 041. XP Aviator, welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Thank you very much for your support. Cheers to you. Oh, I see. Well, the plane's going to be available at X Aviation in a couple hours. Uh, if you do exclamation point plane, you get a link. I think they, uh, I think it's going to be like two and a half, three hours. So it goes, uh, so it goes live. Kevin altitude is no longer climbing or descending has reached the landing field elevation. Got it. Makes sense. Is the entire interior textured now? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ypsilon, good to see it. Eh, field's over there. Center TBM 717 Tank here has a field. I know we're way out here, but. Clear 7 Tank here, I'm sorry. Say goodnight, someone else in my ear. Uh, 7 Tank here has the field. Clear 7 Tank here, okay, Roger. I'll have uh, TBM traffic ahead of you, inbound IFR traffic inbound, so we'll need to expect that vectors across the uh, final approach course, and that'll be for. Uh, or vectors across the final, I should say, and just for spacing, and uh, we'll need to wait till that traffic is on the ground. Okay, 7 Tank here. Five Mike with the radar service terminated. Keep your beacon code. Contact Jackson Tower one one eight point zero seven. Eighteen oh seven TBM five Mike Whiskey. I could just seven cancel. Fighting zero nine or zero vectors across the final first base. Zero nine or zero seven take us here. All right, zero nine zero heading mode. Oh, we should grab the localizer here one zero nine one just in case he wants to put me on it. Over five Mike Whiskey Jackson Tower one two seven zero seven runway one nine or clear to left. Okay, 1091. Well, to 1977. And course of 187. So bring you down here. Come back. CBI. Localizer 1. 187. Looking good. Torque, torque, torque. I know, I got it, guys. Don't worry about it. It's cool. Soon I can throw all my money at it. <laughs> Dude, Goran's, Goran is a magician with the brush, man. It looks real nice. And I don't know how it's coming across on stream, but... Like, it looks pretty flat and whatnot when you see it on stream, but man, when you see it up close to personal, like, the detail on the leather work here, it looks real nice. Over 7, take us here. Turn right at 182. Right, 180, 7, take us here. Okay, 180. APM PSC confirmed for the release just to avoid getting F5 pressing fatigue. Um, about an hour ago, Total Rico said it'd be, I think, three and a half hours. So I think we're, I think we're down to like two, two and a half hours. Might want a different descent on another drop path. Yeah, we'll get it in a second. Seven take us here. Continue right turn heading 220. 220, take us here. Okay, 
right, TT0. I'll do vertical speed mode here once we're uh, descending. I'll probably just kill your autopilot, to be honest. Fly it myself. Okay, checklist. Uh, good, 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 good. Altimeters are set. Gauges look good. Uh, fuel, we're going to put on the right tank. So let's go manual fuel. Right side, good. Fourteen thousand, my discretion. Seven tickets here. Altitude fourteen thousand, and vertical speed down. Full tank. Nurse separator switch can come on now. And lights on landing. They never came off landing, so we're good. Okay, before landing, gear to go. Good. Are the SciTech Pro flight rudder pedals all plastic or are there metal on those? They, the, the combat rudder pedals I have have metal on them. Um, I think the other SciTech stuff is all plastic, though, unfortunately. Okay, there's the initial separator. go. There's the airport right there. Thousand to go. If it's SciTech, it's probably loaded with plastic. Rule of thumb. <laughs> Win the torque! <laughs> yeah. He basically vectored me on this ILS. And in true Jackson Hole fashion, we're going to be high and fast, I bet. Let's pull that speed back. We are flaps at 178, gear 178, and landing flaps 122. We're going to look for an approach speed here about 90 knots. Landing gear. Uh, we are not slowing down either. Seems like somebody screwed with our uh, uh, indicated our speed again. Gee, our pedo tube seems to be in bad shape. Why am I not getting a gl no glide slope, no localizer? Huh. All right, let's bring the speed back. We've got no, we've got no airspeed indicator, so we'll fly it off the glide slope. Delta 1977, contact Salt Lake Tower, 119.05. Our headwind's eight knots. We're up pretty high, so I have to guesstimate. Add some, add a little bit to that. Go one notch of flaps. It's going to be a barn burner here when we finally start descending. November 7, Tango Sierra 5, heading uh, 185, descend and maintain 11,000. 185, 11,000, 7, Tango Sierra. Thousand vertical speed, and we'll set it for two thousand. November seven Tango Sierra, clear visual approach, runway one nine, ready service two minutes, contact tower. Gear. Visual approach, runway one nine, clear uh, contact tower, seven Tango Sierra. Gear coming down. Landing gear. 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 Landing gear.
Jackson Tower, TBM seven one seven Tango Sierra, visual one niner. TBM seven one seven Tango Sierra, Jackson Tower, runway one nine, clear to land. Wind two seven zero at seven. Clear to land, runway one nine or seven Tango Sierra. Gear unsafe. Great. Uh, and gear is down, but we're missing. Left. So let's bring the gear back up. So we can cycle it. Expect one seven thousand five minutes after departure. Squawk four zero. Cycle it again. Net four seventeen cleared to Friedman Airport. Boise three departure. Vectors to Boise. Then it's filed. Uh, maintain one six. Okay, we're still missing one. Expect one seven in five minutes and squawk four zero five four. It'll pop it down there. Net four seventeen is back correct. All right, I like to pump it, don't I? That's how it works, right? You're supposed to pump this thing? How many times you gotta pump it before it comes to You gotta pump this thing forever, right? Wait, you have to push that? Hmm. See, this is why I don't do failures, because I don't I don't know the failures. Like I don't know the procedures and whatnot. So like it it becomes not interesting very quickly. Checklist. <sighs> Emergency gear extension. Maintain airspeed less than 150 knots. Checked. Landing gear control down. Landing gear circuit breaker pull. Jackson Tower, TBM 717, Tango Sierra. We're having an issue with our landing gear currently. We need to go around. TBM 7, Tango Sierra. Roger, make left traffic to runway 1 liner. Left traffic to runway 1 liner, 7, Tango Sierra. Okay, airspeed, landing gear control. We need to pull the landing gear circuit breaker. That's going to be... Probably with the rest of the circuit breakers over here. Uh, servos, engine airframe, AHARs, landing gear. Okay, landing Dragon gear circuit breakers pulled. Advise when you have Jackson water. Expect uh, ILS Yankee runway one line approach. Floor hatch open, bypass selector pull fully and locked. I'm guessing by I'm guessing this is the bypass selector. Okay. And actuate with maximum amplitude. Hand pump. Horizon uh, 492, descend to maintain 13000. Jackson altimeter 3041. Yep. We are maximum amplitude accentuating. I should put our coffee away, right? All right how, ooh, hey, we're a little high. And our altitude's up there. <laughs> oh, crap. Speed. Landing gear. Landing I know the landing gear. gear's not working. Landing gear. 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 Deploy the rat. Landing gear. Yeah. HKIM contact. Landing gear. Landing gear. Uh, landing gear. gear horn cutout landing has to be gear. somewhere, right? Just do that. It's fine. I know it takes like a billion pumps for these things to work. Do not enter icing conditions. Noted.
Oh, got three green, okay. BHKM, Maxgate approach, you do an altimeter 3018. Okay, so we we'll continue this checklist here. Hand pump, landing gear, circuit breaker, push. Back in. It's in. Let's try not to hit this hill here. This is our downwind. Check gear down, switch actuate. Yeah, gears, uh, check gear down. Yep, three green. Bypass selector unlock, push. Okay. Jackson Tower, TBM 717 Tango Sierra. We're midfield now. I uh, left downwind. TBM 717 Tango Sierra, are you ready to land? Is your down? Affirmative. We uh, got the gear indication fixed. 7 Tango Sierra. TBM 7 Tango Sierra, thank you. Run me 1 9 and to land. Clear to land, run me 1 9 or TBM 7 Tango Sierra. Oh, hey. My airspeed's working again. What do you know? <laughs> No, so like the, the, the whole the whole failure thing is interesting when you like really know the airplane, and it works in this case because we do have the um, the emergency procedures here in front of us. But like for a lot for a lot of these airplanes, like if if this were to happen in you know like a Piper Aero, it's like well I don't know what to do in that. Like I haven't been trained to fly these planes in the real world, so that's that's why I tend to just not care about um, failures and whatnot. All right, so we're gonna make this. Short approach. It's going to be spelled Quebec in uniform India Romeo Tango. That's the first fix on the final. Non standard, uh, non standard pattern here. Sorta. You fly with me anytime. All right. As long as we're flying a fixed gear plane, though. Total Rico said it did it perfectly. Great. That's what I like to hear. Praise from the developer. Shower me in praise, I say. Let's go. Okay, so we'll finish this out. Uh, I'm not putting my damn gear up. Okay, go flaps full. Horizon 42, turn right heading 210, back to the final approach course. Sync rate. Sync rate. Sync rate. I know sync rate, don't worry about it. Don't be such a baby. Okay. Gear down three green. Flaps down indicated. Flaps now down and indicated. Runway's in sight. Clearance received. We're going. It's 45 degree this. I normally would have flown further out there and not, you know, try to have a sink rate, unstable approach and all that, but I also know that there's, there's a Q400 coming in right now on approach. Come on. Landing gear. Landing gear. Uh -oh. Hey, our gear collapsed. Landing gear. Landing gear. Squawk three five four three. Landing gear. Landing gear. Stall. Landing gear. Landing gear. Stall. Landing gear. It still broke. Landing gear. Stall. Wee. Landing gear. <laughs> landing gear. Stall. Landing gear. I'm sure landing I've been. Gear. I'm sure I've been trolled. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing. Stall. Well, everybody wants to see a crash. So there's your crash. We came. We tried. We failed. I mean, everything looked like it should have been fine. We followed the checklist. That's why I don't do failures.
I don't find it to be that interesting. I would rather land it, park the plane, and call it a day, but it's fine. I won't hold it against you, AJ. <laughs> nah, it's cool, man. Why don't you have the GPB scenery? Uh, I'm not in the uh, GPB program, so. I don't, I don't, I don't, I only have, I have his freeware stuff that he did originally, but I'm not in his, uh, I'm not in the exclusive club. Oh, good. Nope. Plane's still broken. Remember when Ty said no repair cost at end of the stream. <laughs> hey, this was not my fault. This you're not found. Thanks for the bits, man. Appreciate it. Cheers. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing So now we found ourselves at a bit of an impasse. Landing gear. Just turn the damn plane off. Landing gear. Start with that. Landing gear. Stop the plane from moving. Landing gear. 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 Just turn the whole thing off. Now, how do I set a new plane? There we go. Create new airframe. Okay. And failures, fix all systems. Good. November 717 Tango Sierra, set that. And we're just going to reload the sim completely. Jaha, already good to see you. Yeah, things are going well. Problems out of our control. <laughs> Landing gear. Landing gear. ELA, good to see you. How you doing? Oh, grab the CSL. Good call. Good call. Uh... I need... Hey, Toto, can you send that to me, Discord? The updates. Uh, it's on X-Pilot, okay. That's... Thank you. All right. Mm-hmm. Update finished. Do I have an X do I have an X pilot account? I guess I do. So we kill this. Uh, well, that's pretty tiny. Uh, it's a pretty tiny, pretty tiny CSL. Uh, resources, plugins, yeah. Pilot Edge, CS Pro resources, CSL PBM nine hundred. All right, CSL's loaded now. Get this fired up. Checking updates. Checking updates again. Playing Ben, good to see you, man. It showed up just in time for Cat Does Desktops. Uh huh. Try to get Keith to include it by default. Ah, I gotcha. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm sure he'll at least put it on the site. Update finished. Oh, well, we finished first flight, Jonathan. We're going to get started on flight number two here in a second. Things going about as well as they could. You know. All right. 
right, so new flight. That plane, K Jack. And park over here, GA parking, sure. Good, good, good. All right, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna step away for a moment. If you're taking off, thanks for stopping by. And if you're sticking around, we'll see you here in a few minutes. And uh, yeah, be right back.
Buttons reset here. Okay. Good, 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 good. And there's good. That's up. That's down. Fantastic. Uh, Edward Lang, thanks for the bits, man. Just because you're awesome. I appreciate it, man. Cheers to you, buddy. Well, I have my own. See, the thing is, I have I have my own my own um, curve set up for the plane. So, I think that like the, I think the curve that I have set in X plane and the curve that is being implemented by that is was causing me some weirdness, like as I was coming to try to take off. This is different to curve. All right, I'll I'll, I'll take your word for it. Okay. Uh... Do some flight planning. Heading down to Aspen. Give me some roots. Uh, Alpine two Kisney OCS Trul DBL. That looks good to me. Be this one here? No. This one, 51X Triple Props Jets, Alpine 2, Kissney, Truel, DBL. Yeah. Looks good to me. All right. Good, good, good. Let's file it. Seven one seven Tango Sierra. We are TBM at nine slant Lima. Three hundred twenty knots from K Jack to KSE. We're gonna go all the way to thirty one thousand feet, and we're gonna be on the Alpine two Kisney Truel DBL. Good Alpine two Kisney Truel Red Table. File out. All right. Go fight. Let's go fly some planes. All right. I'll, ch I'll check it out. I'll check it out later, to Toto. I'll, I'll leave it on for now. I trust you. Chocks on. Airframe manager. Nope, that's good. Uh, I swear to God, I hope nothing is broken in here. I just want to make sure nothing got, like, remained foobard after that. Okay, that's all green. Good. Okay, let's fire the sucker up. Uh, actually, let's load gas and all that crap in here. So, payload. Uh, yeah, that's good. Do one, two. We'll do three people this time. Close, close. Uh... 20 pounds there, 50 pounds there, puts us right in the middle, right in the middle, close, and then fuel, uh, 
Uh, we'll do 100 again. 100 per side. Good, good. Set, set, set. Okay. Let's get her fired up. Let's go on pilot edge and get her fired up. Connected to pilot edge. Connected to pilot edge. Uh, okay. I don't think we should be hearing them. Epic over there. Okay. I guess Max isn't doing leg two. All right. Oh, uh, grab a crash bar. Pull that sucker up. Battery on. Yeah, I didn't see Max on right now. OG Blue Pill, welcome aboard. It's good to see you. Oh, iPad's up. Sorry. No, nah, it's fine, dude. No acts of God. This like, no, nah, it's fine, man. Whatever. Alright, sucker's on. Indications what I expect. Sure, why not? Nav strobe, hit you a couple times. Oral warning, okay. The oral warning's good. Gen's off. Ignition on. Auxiliary boost pump on. Fuel selector manual, it's good. That's good, that's good, that's good. Starter's going. There it is. Test Look at that. System test. Okay. All right, NG's coming up. It's over 30 or 13%. Put a low idle. For hot start, hung start. Okay, RPM's up. Temps are good. Go, Jens. Missions on auto. Starters off. So boost pump auto. Autopilot on. Good there. Flight idle. Prop RPM is it coming up? Good. Parking brake appears to be set this time. Nope, it's not. Now it is. Oh, we're on the chalks, so that's why. Take the chalks out now. All right, it's checklisted up here. Uh, actually, let's do AC leads, pressurization, inertial separator, pedo stall heat. Okay, cast is good. Uh. Everything's charging. Mm -hmm. Bleed switch auto, AC switch auto, pressurization auto, control sector good, temp sector not worried about. That's good, that's good, that's good. LFE selection. Ah. We didn't do this last time. System. FMS LF. Well we haven't set the we haven't set the uh, the flight up yet, so we'll do that in a second. Retard, retard, retard. <laughs> Set the trims. Uh, elevator trim. Bring that all the way back. Cafe Chloe, thank you very much for seven months of support. Cafe Chloe, cheers to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, elevator. Let's reset the aileron trim. Oops. Let's set the rudder trim here. Just about in the green. Okay, trims are set. Good, good. Initial separator's on. And that's the taxi checklist, so we're not there yet. Cool. Is that, uh, is that Max? 
Yeah, it's Max. So there's there's CSL. Looking pretty okay. Left the slaps down though. We gotta get a higher resolution mod on that Toto. Come on, man. <laughs> That's like bluebell quality. We want HD CSLs. It's all right though. Uh, okay, so let's call up ground clearance for what we got here. Jackson Hole, airport diagram. Ground's 2455. I had to keep the size to a minimum 30,000 30, polygons. It's all right. Once you add a distance, it's fine. If you zoom in real close, obviously it looks a little, you know, whatever. But I, I see what you're getting at. It's fine. HD Simulation, welcome aboard. Happy Friday. Good to see you. You should make an HD one, though. Like, there's a bunch of HD CSLs that exist out there that are super high resolution. They look really, really nice. Like, I know that Keith doesn't bundle those by default, but... They are. He does. He does have a whole section of just the HD CSLs. Uh, would you wish there were more of the GA planes modeled in CSLs? Yeah, me too. Jackson Ground. Good evening, TBM seven one seven Tango Sierra IFR Aspen. Jackson Ground, good evening. Clear to Aspen Airport. Alpine 2 departure, heaven has filed. Climb VA seat, except maintain 15,000. Squawk 5121. And expect flight level 310, five minutes after departure. Go to the Aspen Airport, Alpine 2, as filed. Climb the seat, except maintain 15,000, 310 within five. And squawk 5121, 7 Tango Sierra. TPM 7 Tango Sierra is back, correct? All right, let's go flight plan and then click the button in and go to menu, scroll down, delete the flight plan, KJAC, proc, select departure, Alpine 2. I'm not going to either of those. No. Oh, okay, whatever. We're just going to go direct to Kisney. It won't let me pick a... Actually, if I just hit clear... Ah, yeah, that'll work. Nah, it still wants to pick Ida. Weird. Why won't it let me pick a transitionless departure? Well, Ida's got less for me to delete, so let's just do that. Load that. Uh... Mm-hmm. 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 Ah, you piece of crap. Whatever. Why is it not working now? Give me a button. Come on. Clear. Pushing the thing. Kissney. What happens when I just hit Kissney? Okay, good. Didn't highlight. That's probably Laminar's thing. Uh, okay, then Truel. T R U. No, not truck. Truck is a very different place. Um, 
R U E L. Let's try this again. T R U E L. Have Truel comes red table, uh, DBL. DB and <laughs> DBA. Huh? Happens. And then Aspen, K A S C. -E. Aspen C, just Aspen. Uh, that's set. Okay, so we brief this departure real quick. Alpine 2 departure says fly on departure, uh, intercept the 192 radial to Kisney off Jackson and cross Kisney at or above 5,000 feet. Kisney's been there by 27 DME. So we're going to have to fly this because it didn't load the departure in. Uh, we're going to fly this manually. So let's tune to Jackson. Jackson's 115.4. We'll call it pseudo manually. We're gonna we're gonna do this. 15.4. It's not gonna identify it. Well, that's a problem. It really won't pick up the Jackson VOR down here? Interesting. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, other options CDI, GPS mode, put it in OBS. And let's undo that. So we're Kissney, right? Kissney. So if we do Kissney at one nine or two, I'll probably do it too. Kissney at one ninety two. There we go. So we're we're gonna use Kissney as if it were a as if it were a VOR. Uh, we're putting the we're putting the CDI into OBS mode here, and we'll be able to then track our track the one ninety two uh, radial into Kissney, and that'll be our that'll be our our flight. Um, and then once we're direct Kissney, once we're pointing towards Kissney on the 192, we'll go direct enter enter, and then um, we'll be direct Kissney. Good, science. All right, transponder code uh, five one two one five one two one, and transponder alt. Good. We'll set the clear shield up here. We're gonna go start in uh, nav mode. Nope, start heading mode because why not? And we're gonna go to one nine zero. One nine zero, uh, and flight director can come on. Flight director was already on. Come on for real this time. Heading mode. Uh, let's do vertical speed, fifteen hundred feet, up to a speed of uh, one hundred and fifty knots for the climb out this time around. Good. Should we can just go flight change mode? Just go straight to that, because that'll figure it out. Uh, glare shield set, transponder set, flight plan's been loaded. Okay, taxi light here. Max is already left. Set. Passenger briefing, parking brake will come off. Good, 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 good. Let's grab the weather. And we'll get out of here. Two seven zero seven knots to mouth is but a clear skies. Nine Celsius minus eight dew point altimeter three zero four two. Forty two. Uh oh, pop out keyboard in the bezel. Oh yeah, it is. That's cool. Nice. Oh, you can even type it, too. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's go taxi range. 
Check the brakes. The brakes work. Cool. Justin Ground, TBM 717 Tango Sierra's Delta with the weather for taxi. TBM Marcel Tango Sierra, runway 19 via Alpha. 19 via Alpha, TBM 7 Tango Sierra. HKM, get approach, I have a cancellation received. Thank you, have a good night. Turn them up a little bit. They're left. They're right. Off we go. Oh, yeah. Fuel selector should be on auto. You're right. I would have caught that eventually. We'll just manually kick it over to the left side then. Okay. Uh, Park break. TBM 5 Mike Whiskey, departure. TBM 5 Mike Whiskey, Jackson Tower, runway 1-9, take off. Wind to Sibiru at 7. Flaps are take at takeoff. <laughs> yes, good. Trim set. Pilot, yep. Pastor table, that's good. Strobe switch is on. Cast display is still an inertial separator, that's it. Fuel symmetrical. Instruments LFE. Return system FMS LFE and back to the checklist. LFE is good. Takeoff distances, yeah, we're fine there. Rotation speed, whenever we rotate. Okay, good. We're ready for takeoff. Cool. There's Max. Oh, geez. <laughs> Hey, what's up, buddy? You and I seem to have the same issue. <laughs> Is this plane frame heavy? Nah, dude. It's pretty easy on the frames. I had some frame rate issues on an earlier flight. Uh, we're trying to track down what the, what the deal there was, but I seem to have only been, been the only person that's experienced that. So uh, it's been running beautifully tonight, though. Archer's on the chart. So like say center of 3325. Nagy, good to see you, man. Happy uh, happy Friday. 3325, there we go. You got a black screen refresh. TBM fine, Mike, we see contact Salt Lake Center. So Jay Falcon, good to see you, man. How you doing? I'm trying to tear up this plane. Hey, man, the last one wasn't my fault. Defective, defective product sent from the manufacturer. Somebody should have checked that gear pin. Captain Bill, good to see you. Oh, shoot. Four flight is up. Sorry. My bad. Sterling Y, good to see it. 12 chair by drive just arrived. About to put a hurt on my ISP and Bing. Yeah. Uh, we need to put the weather on. Jackson Tower, TBM 717, Tango Sierra, short one niner. TBM 717, Tango Sierra, Jackson Tower, hold short runway one niner for space. Hold short runway one niner, TBM 
Oh yeah, flaps. But I set the flaps. No, I did set the flaps. Interesting. Well, flaps are set now. Ugh, excuse me. Are the USB ports functional in the cockpit? Um, so the USB port, if you click on it, TBM, uh, seven, ten, Lucero, runway one, nine, pulls an eye. We'll take off from a one nine or TBM seven one seven, Tango Sierra. Uh, we'll look at it here in just a second. All right, lights, camera, good, set, action, good, good, indicated, trims, everything else. Okay, let's go fly. Him. After a disengaged park break. Go to the right. Go to the left. Booty be 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 be. Romeo one nine identified. Here we go. Depart, uh, Salt Lake Center, uh, Seven Tango Sierra. And switch. Come on, do it again. There we go. Crap. Salt Lake City Center, TBM 717, Tango Sierra, 8,600, climbing flight level, or climbing 15,000 via the Kissney, or Alpine 2. TBM 717, Tango Sierra, Salt Lake City Center, Ida. Ida, Sub Tango Sierra. Number 5, Max, Escape, Boston, back. November 2, Whiskey Papa, contact Monterey, Tower 118.1. Where is it? It's supposed to be in flight change mode at 51. Five zero knots. Maybe I'm seven tango zero at a contact four miles south of the Jackson VR. Climb the AC to seventeen five level two three zero. Climb the AC to seventeen two three zero seven tango zero. Oh, I didn't set an altitude. That's what it was. Yeah. Montreal Tower, November two three two. Whiskey Papa is on the R nav two eight left approach. November two three two. Whiskey Papa. That'll do it. Wind three two zero three. Clear to land. Two eight left. Two three two. Whiskey Papa. That's a good accent. Ah, we'll figure this thing out eventually. That was a dumb mistake. I'm a little distracted from the uh, previous flight, I think. Actually, we're up here. We can go ahead and kill the inertial separator. And... Climb speed. Yeah, we're going to be 150. Trims are good. Yaw damper's on. Lights are set. Throttle's good. Yep, yep, okay. And we can come to the FMC, go flight plan. Uh, 
Kisney. Direct. Enter. And then we can change our mode here from OBS to not OBS. Retard. Retard. So now we're flying Retard. direct to Kisney on the uh, on the course that we're supposed to be flying on. See? Easy. Peace cake. Uh, this show not found. Thanks for gifting to Leading Edge Simulations. Goran, it's good to see you, man. Cheers. Thank you very much, this show not found. Thank you for stopping by, Goran. Happy Friday. Uh, she's doing pretty good, man. Yeah. We crashed the first, the first flight, but that was AJ's fault. <laughs> and we're not going to let him forget it, I tell you. <laughs> um... Yeah, we just took off out of Jackson Hole on our way down to Aspen, and she's running. She's she's purring along pretty good, man. I'm really digging this plane. I love the TVM, and I'm 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 really enjoying this model here. So, I did a little bit of flying during the beta and whatnot. I know I'd sent some feedback to Toto, not as much as I wish I could have. And uh, I intentionally did not stream this plane until it was until it was done. Like that was sort of my plan all along. But uh, she's done, man, or you know, done enough. Win the torque. Yeah, watch your torque. I know. So it's. I think that the magic number seems to be 90% torque, inertial separator off, and then it'll raise itself up to about 99 or 100 uh, during the climb here. So that seems to be the uh, that seems to be the way to go. Thereabouts. Bad turbulence. Good to see, you, man. All right, anyway, yeah, yeah. So we were talking about the uh, the USB ports. Okay. So yeah, they bring up an iPad. Your um, your backup your backup AHARS. So we could like iPad inside our iPad. Here, hang on. Now we'll never get lost. <laughs> Wait, hang on. I got this. Perfect. We got it covered. Any questions? <laughs> Thirty-five seventy-seven, seven Tango Zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, that's enough of that. <laughs> I had to. You understand that, right? Oh, no. All right, you go away. Thank you. Uh, Standard Barrow. So I say centers TBM 717 Tango Sierra flight level 189 or climbing flight level 230 Alpine 2. TBM 717 Tango Sierra, Santa, climbing maintain flight level 310. Climb maintain flight level 310 TBM 7 Tango Sierra. 310. There we go. All right. Looking good. We'll turn the lights off this time. Because we can. Uh, let's see. Important things. Pressurization is happening. Yeah. <laughs> if we set the landing field elevation this time. Didn't do that last time. I haven't done that yet flying this airplane. So, yeah. Take that. Right now we're showing an hour 26. But I know that number is going to go down pretty dramatically. Especially once we make this turn and it becomes all tailwind. Oh, yeah. All tailwind. Uh-huh. And, you know, we get to altitude and speed up and all that, too. <laughs> we need more synthetic vision. 
We have to go deeper. Is there a turbo prop for dummies that explains the relationship between torque prop, ITT, etc.? Uh, that's a good question, actually. So, this plane is honestly, this plane's Fadec. Oh, yeah, we need to push the torque up. This plane's basically, I don't know if it is actually Fadec, but it behaves like a Fadec plane. So, there's only one lever you gotta worry about. That's a power lever. But in general, the way that it works is that you have a N2 or NG rating, and that's the uh, that's the interior turbine, how much it's spinning. And then you have this uh, RPM, and you have torque, and you have a temperature that kind of wraps around that. So NG will spool up, and as the NG spools up, you basically start spinning the uh, spinning the prop coming out the front. Um, they're not always going to be spinning at the same sort of ratio because you know there's there's a resistance and all that stuff. Like it's a, tur a, a turbo prop is just a jet engine that's spinning a turbine or spinning a prop. Like the turbine is all, all the power gets eaten up by the turbine to spin the prop out front. So you have your prop RPM. That's how fast the prop is spinning. Um, most important though, you have your torque. Torque is basically your measurement of power. And if you over torque the engine. Um, you're basically pushing components like the prop and the, the shaft and some other stuff beyond their beyond what they're capable of handling. So if you over torque the engine, that's bad. That's real bad. Um, but the worst thing you can do to one of these engines. Well, not quite. It's bad. Just put it that way. So torque is sort of your indication of power. Now, the amount of bite that, that, a, that a prop and whatnot gets on the air decreases as you go up because the air gets thinner. So this plane has a crap ton of power. And we just keep increasing the power, increasing the power, increasing the power. All the way up until right there where it's maxed out. Oh, right here where it's maxed out. Yeah, okay. So we max that sucker out. We can't push power forward anymore. And that's sort of where, you know, you, you just keep climbing. But this, this engine has way more power than the, than the prop and the, the innards are sort of able to, uh, able to handle. So... Then you have ITT. ITT is basically saying that's how hot the engine is. If you're flying on a really hot day, ITT could be your limiting factor. Um, but basically, any one of these, any one, like in a traditional traditional turboprop, any one of these could be your limiting factor. It could be your NG, it could be your ITT, it could be your RPM, or it could be your torque. So when you're flying a traditional turboprop, where you've got all, you know you've got the uh, condition lever, prop lever, and a power lever, you've got to watch all of these. To make sure that you're not make sure that you're not over torquing or, or you know killing your engine so like the relationship between torque and rpm again not in this plane because this plane always spins at 2000 but as the rpm goes down the torque's going to go up because the engine has to work harder to maintain that power level as the rpm goes down conversely as the rpm goes up the torque usually comes down when we start playing around with the inertial separator that that mess, that messes with the torque too because the inertial separator literally diverts air out, basically out of the engine um, to avoid getting fod and all that stuff. It basically just like deflects, deflects bad stuff coming in. So you lose some of that power and you lose some of that torque. That's the best I got for you. Um, this is probably the wrong airplane to learn how to fly a turboprop on. Like if you want to fly a proper turboprop, you want to look at like the C90 or something along those lines. Like that's got a couple of engines to manage. Um, that's got the condition levers, got the RPM levers and all that stuff as well with these like this is like flying the da62 you know the da62 um that we have here in the sim is fadec you don't have prop levers you don't have mixture or any of that it's all handled by the uh, it's all handled by the simulations or it's all handled by the, the computers you just have a power lever it's exact same idea caravan caravan's a good one yeah caravan's perfect if you want to learn how to fly a turbo prop you want to do some fs economy stuff go fly the caravan yeah you kids in your electronic gizmos. Yeah, right? Oh, I realize I've left this on the whole time. I was explaining that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I did. Never mind. The bandit's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, you'll burn some engines up in the bandit. That's for sure. Scott Adair, good to see it. Happy to help, Bill. Yeah, they're kind of like they're kind of weird at first, but then once you like, it, it's like with the jet engines or with the pistons or like once you learn one of them, they all start to make sense. And the fundamentals, the fundamentals of every turboprop is exactly the same. Just like the fundamentals of every piston engine is exactly the same. Um, it's just different, you know, different like different little variances between them, but they all they all kind of you know the the principles are all the same. I'm doing pretty well, man. We're uh we're on our way down to Aspen. 
We're flying the old hot start uh, TBM 900. One of my probably the probably the plane I'm looking most forward to this year. Uh, I don't really know that anything else has come out that, that will top the amount of fun that I'm going to have in this thing. On the topic of the Bandit, I need to finish my Com Air livery. Yeah. TBM Bandit Caravans are all PT6s. Yes, sir. Austin put a PT6 in his Lancer. Austin Meyer Lancer. Check this out. Um, 844 X-Ray. This plane looks mean. Look at this thing. That's a bad picture, actually. It's way out of focus. <laughs> there you go. This plane looks freaking mean. But this has got the same engine up in front of it. And it's a four-seater. Like, it's ridiculous. It goes real fast, too. Austin Myers, the creator of X-Plane, if you didn't know that. And 500 to go. Here's a level off. Here comes a big speed up. See that estimated time and route go way down now. We should accelerate from 269. I bet, I bet we accelerate another 100 knots over the ground as we uh, as we hit the uh, acceleration. What's the max speed in the 900? Um, yeah, about 330 knots. True, I think is what you get out of it. And then there's the Draco. Well, the, Dra the Draco is just ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, you can hot start it. Oh, you can totally hot start a tur. Um, you can totally hot start this thing. That's the one of the biggest risks of starting a turboprop is that you have a damn good chance, like if you screwed up, of hot starting and nuking the engine. Yeah, the, you have just as much of a chance of doing it in this thing as you would in a uh, in a in a traditional jet engine. It's, the, the the innards are like the, the the physics behind how they fire are essentially the same. Um, you have a fan up in front that sucks in air, creates a pressure chamber, add fuel, add boom, and out the back goes whoosh. And the difference is the jet uses the thrust directly out the back to create the to create the whoosh. Whereas a turboprop spins a whole bunch of fans that are connected to the prop shaft that are connected to the prop. So you have the prop up in front that's causing the, the go juice as opposed to the thrust out back. I think with every turboprop, every turboprop has some percentage of that power shooting out the exhaust that actually provides a little bit of a little bit of push um i think in the i think in the dash 8q400 it's like 15 percent of the thrust of that engine comes from the exhaust which is kind of crazy one two two victor uniform good to see you man how you doing welcome aboard ridiculous speed for a single pilot plane yeah it's nuts dude you can link something bretson it's fine links are always allowed I'm biking in Grand Junction this weekend. Let me know when you're overhead so I can wave. I will do that. Legacy 2059. Good to see you, man. I think Rush talked about a cousin or an uncle that is a Mooney that's been equipped with a turbine. Holy crap, dude. That seems excessive. It's called residual thrust, and yes, it's a real thing. Thank you. That's why we got Total Rico here, because he can, he can correct me when I'm like half we won't say when I'm wrong. We'll say when I'm halfway right. It's interesting that there's a little bit of error between these two uh, altimeters. I bet that's intentional. Excuse me. TBM turbine is installed backwards. You're right, it actually is, isn't it? Because the intake, the intake sucks the air out and then pushes it up the back, and then the boom goes forward, right? Yeah. Do you prefer the Tullus A319, Zebo 737, or the F-Crest MB Air? Uh, I take the Tullus 319 personally of those three. 
Remember, the Zebo's free. How does this thing fly? What do you got here? Uh, that's a lot of engines. <laughs> that's a lot of boom. <laughs> If that's a simulated Dynon D10, it's a GPS uh, altitude as opposed to a static system. Uh, I don't know. Is it? I don't. I don't know. If it's GPS altitude, it's way wrong because the GPS altitude right now is thirty-one four fifty-three, according to ForeFlight. So this is the one we're flying off of. That's that's the backup. So that's showing 50, about 50 higher. And we are 450 feet below the GPS altitude. Uh, I have all and I could decide with the flight on it. Ah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, that wasn't a question of which one should I get, which one should I fly. Yeah, I much prefer the 319. I think the 319 is a pretty fun little plane to fly. Okay, we'll do a flyby for you guys. We'll do one from the other side. Thanks for your patience. I appreciate it. Yeah. One more, because he was interrupting us. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's good. It's not GP stop to this barrel. Might be a slight discrepancy in temperature correction. Ah, that makes sense. J Barrow 96 good to see you. Long time no see. Hope you've been doing well. I am doing well. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Good to have you back. The old Friday night flights here, making our way down to Aspen. Over the plains of nothingness here. We've got 45 minutes till we get to our destination now. We are doing 332 over the ground. I would think that we'd be doing better than that, but I guess we're not. Interesting. 18 knot tailwind, 332, so we're only doing... 315 true? I guess that's about right. Yeah, 315, 320 true is about what I've been, what I've been getting out of it. I don't know how to actually get true airspeed on here. I'd love to have a true airspeed indicator somewhere, but I couldn't find it. And I'm wondering if it's just not in the laminar stuff. I don't think any primary instruments would do GPS altitude because everyone flies barrow. GPS altitude would screw things up. Yep, I agree. Altitude is hardest thing for a GPS to calculate. It does that long well, altitude not so much. Makes sense. Graduating college soon and starting flight school to become a CFI. Nice, man. Do you have your PPL? Um, do you have your PPL, Mr. Brown? Or are you starting fresh? Split underneath the airspeed tape only shows uh, TS still reaching Mach 0.4. That it's just a mock display for some reason. Garmin thought it was a good idea. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it seems kind of silly. Like true, true, true yeah, airspeed would be a nice thing to have, even at you know, even at cruise. It's easy enough to figure out. Just take your basically take your ground speed, subtract your tailwind, and you got true airspeed. But I don't like to do math, and I don't have to. Broadwell Skylight, good to see it. When did you move from LWM to BBY? Earlier this year. Uh, so in in February, I left my flying club, and I joined a new one down here at Beverly. So I'm yeah, I've, I've been I've been based in Beverly now for about eight months or so. 
Think there's some way to ring it out in the menus of the real thing. Yeah, I try I tried to go through all the menus and whatnot to find it. Like I'm sure you can get it somewhere. But it's definitely not in here. I've definitely found the edge of what some of the laminar stuff is capable of doing. Math and flying, who would have thunk it, right? Yeah. Starting fresh. Ah, don't the, the PPL spun though. Like get your PPLs a good time. Don't uh, don't 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 have the frowny face about starting from starting from scratch. That's plane's real good. Goran, if you're still here, man, you did a great job on the texturing, dude. It looks fantastic. Like, if you were to take this plane and compare it to what Total Rico was showing off like a year and a half ago or whatever, huge, huge difference. Like, it, it, it doesn't even look like, it's not even the same plane. Not that Total Rico was doing a bad job. But taking it from that little piddly was going to be a freeware project and putting it into this, that's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. All right, that's enough fun. Have a great night, man. Thanks for stopping by. Enjoy your night. It was reworked quite a few times, eh, as it, as, it, as I'm sure most projects are. Play me a monster. Good to see you. <laughs> Total Rico says, I wasn't doing a bad job. I was doing a horrendous job. <laughs> Fair enough, dude. Yeah, but that wasn't your focus, right? Like, you're not a texturing or a model guy. You're you're a coder, a systems guy. Different, um, di different, different, different strokes. Oh, we got 40 minutes till we get there. Oh, one hour and 45 took us on sale, right? Yeah, I got you. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Doing three D modeling for me is like eating broken glass. At least you know. At least you know when you're. At least you know when to admit that you can't. Like, you know when to give up. Put it that way. Where's my heads up display? And why isn't the pin moving? If this was a Caronado plane, this pin would be vibrating. Just so you know. I, thank you that it's not a Caronado plane. Although Caronado announced that citation, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pick it up. It'll be the first Caronado plane I've bought in a very long time. But it's running, it's a citation running the default FMC. And, uh, yeah. Like, looks and flight dynamics will be... Or, flight dynamics won't be a huge issue with that. It's mostly about the looks and the sounds. Literally unflyable. <laughs> I remember back in the day when we were all... When, well, when we... When Chris Chris Stewart, uh, the heli pilot, was working on uh, a lot of the shared cockpit stuff. He was getting Caronado planes going left and right. And he was so happy that every single one of them... He managed. He he set. He found the data ref for the pin, like the pin that vibrated and whatnot. And he would always sync up the vibration of the pin between the the, the two clients. Every single time. Jack Winston, good to see you, man. What yoke or joystick do you recommend? Um, I mean, if you want to spend money, I would say get a um, get a get a Thrustmaster Warthog and some decent pedals. If you don't want to spend quite that much money, the, the Thrustmaster T16000M is going to be the way to go. Again, with some pedals. Uh, I don't personally recommend a yoke unless you want to like spend a thousand bucks and get a Yoko. Uh, I think the yokes are generally like they're just big, they're cumbersome, they're clunky, and I, I don't I don't really care for them personally. Uh, pretty much all biz jets are underrepresented. Oxbox priorities: pen sync technology, <laughs> PST. Wait for the AFM citation. Now oh, that's going to be a ways out though. I'll fly them both. Don't worry. Good pedal suggestion. Honestly, I don't know. I've got my SciTech combat rudder pedals that I'm, I'm happy enough with, but I don't think they sell them anymore. Um, I think that like I, the Thrustmaster pedals on the floor, like they felt like they were kind of close to each other. They were, they were a little difficult to use. You couldn't like lazy boy back and just sort of relax with them. Um, Thrustmaster TPRs. Those are the, I think those are the are those the hung pedals. Um, 
<laughs> Phrasing. Uh, those are those like the 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 the, the, um, the gravity pedals or whatever. Uh, I can't afford that paddling. Come on, man. That's a good thought. I don't know. I've even used some like high end yokes. Like I've, Yoko is about the only yoke I've used that I've really been like, holy crap, this is incredible. Um, most of the yokes that I've used have just been a very sour experience. CLS E yoke, 1800 euro. Yeah, or 1900 euro. I don't think so. I definitely can't afford that. That's a lot of subscriptions. Put it that way. Do you know about the X56? I have an X55 and I'm happy with it, but um, I would generally steer clear of Cytec unless you really, unless you really, really want to get it. Like the, the, the Thrustmaster T16000M comes with the same sensor as the Thrustmaster Warthog, which is pretty much the best sensor you can get in a joystick. MFD crosswinds, hell yeah. Would love a steady level golf stream. Unfortunately, it'll never happen. Anybody who tries to build a golf stream and make any money off of it or even puts one out there, like it's pretty much going to get shut down by golf stream. Um, the reason why I won't stream that freeware golf stream project is because there's a good chance that it'll get shut down as soon as it gets noticed. This is my strong arm. It's good to see you, Brandon. We use the Bruner yoke in all of our AATDs. Uh, although a better model than that, that's awesome, dude. The Bruner yoke would blow your mind. Yeah, I bet it will for 2000 bucks. Yeah, I bet it would. <laughs> VKBs. Oh, yeah, VKB is pretty good. They're tough to get hold of, too, though, aren't they? Like I said, I haven't, I haven't invested in flight controls in a long time. Like, I'm, my, I've been happy enough with my SciTech X55 that I haven't seen a lot of need to, um, uh, to, to, to make any changes. But at some point, if, if I switch to something, it's probably going to be to a, 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 a Warthog. Why does Gulfstream not allow modeling? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's largely because their marketing department has such a tight grip on the, um, like the, the image of their company. They don't, they don't necessarily want, they want, they want that exclusivity is what I understand. To say that, you know, be, being, being a part of Gulfstream, having Gulfstream or owning anything Gulfstream is like a, a very, it's a club and you have to be rich and whatnot to get in this club sort of thing. That's my understanding. But yeah, their their marketing and their IP department and all that stuff would just shut you right down if they once they found out about it. Hospital Center, United 417, 10,500, climbing 16,000. United 417, Center, climbing 17, 17,000. 17, United 417. Pretty light night on the network, man. Like, there's nobody on. It's kind of crazy. There's Max and I. Couple other guys in Wuss and three guy or sorry, two guy one guy in SoCal. And like five five or so of us up here. Huh. Not your typical Friday night on pilot edge, that's for sure. Set to find the Gulfstream sim soon for training. Wonder who models it. Oh, that's all in house, dude. Gulfstream makes all their own stuff. I've, um, I've, I've, I've had a chance to fly inside of one of Gulfstream simulators, and it's got all their avionics, all their custom stuff. It's got everything. And it's building house. Come midnight, it'll explode. Yeah, right? Everybody getting their TBMs. It should be able to, uh, Bill. Because the uh, the real sim gear is going to have um, it uses all the data reps and whatnot. Uh, hope not derail discussion. No, not at all. Uh, seven up, good to see. You. Just wondering if anyone's heard updates on the AFL KA three or KA three fifty. 
I don't think they put updates out for a while. Like, I, I think there was something over the summer or whatever. I would check the website, but um, they've been they've been pretty quiet on the progress of that thing. Again, I would love to see another turbo prop come out, especially a, a King Air. But um, I don't I don't I don't know. It sounded like it was it sounded like progress was slow. Uh, TG Squid, new to flight sims, why not VAT sim instead of Pilot Edge? Uh, I choose, well, I fly both. You don't have to choose one over the other. But I'm, I mostly fly on Pilot Edge because I want to have the guaranteed ATC. So I know that I'm going to have ATC coverage for this entire flight. Whereas with VAT sim, eh, eh. You know, you could have a controller hop on. I, I've seen controllers sign off because there's been too many people online. And they just don't want to deal with the traffic. Um... And, and the quality that you get is is generally worse on Batsim. And I, I it's just, it, they're two different experiences, but um, I, I typically prefer uh, Pilot Edge. You know what, it, it, speaking of Batsim, by the way, it might it might even be the, the Seattle FNOs tonight. So there might be a lot of people flying on there this evening. Would have been fun. To, actually, it could have been fun to fly up there with the, uh, with the TBM, throw all these guys for a loop. It's like taking that sob, taking that sob into an FNO. <laughs> Microsoft Gamer XD, good to see you. Happy Friday. Kevin G14, welcome aboard. Is it out yet? Not yet? Uh, it'll come out in a couple of hours. It'll be 65 bucks. Jay Patel, good to see you. Uh, that other Josh, welcome aboard. That's typical FNO. You know, there's a lot going... Like, that. the FNOs from Vatsim are generally pretty popular. That's why, like... I basically fly on Pilot Edge or I fly on an FNO. I don't I don't do too much on Batsim outside of the FNOs. A total clown fiesta. I'm sure. I'm sure it's a complete gong show, yeah. One hundred percent. TBM 5, Mike Whiskey, contact the Denver Center, 133.67. 3675, Mike Whiskey. That'll be my next frequency, so. TBM 5, Mike Whiskey, contact the Denver Center, 133.67. 3367, TBM 7, Tango Sierra. TBM 5, Mike Whiskey, 2, I know, smooth. TBM 5, Mike Whiskey, Denver Center, Roger. Denver Center, TBM 717, Tango Roger. Roger. Half hour to go. Think about buying an X-56 and sort of looking into it. I mean, they're fine. They'll get the job done. Is the weather radar functional? Yep. Lost Kiwi, it's good to see you. Ortho looks pretty good. I love flying out here. Like, it's so different than the default stock stuff that doesn't have any of this, like, texturing and any of this detail. It's nuts. Oh, yeah, dude, it's going to be all TBMs tomorrow on Pilot Edge. I'm looking forward to it. What beer are you drinking? Uh, I drank an A10 Warthog double IPA earlier, and now I'm drinking a glass of Cabernet Sauvignon, my 2017 vintage. Captain Claus, welcome aboard. Happy Friday. Hope you were doing well. Uh, we're flying, man. Making our way down to Aspen tonight. In the Hot Start TBM 900, which comes out in about an hour and a half, roughly. Have I tried Schofer Hofer grapefruit beer? Probably not. I'm not a big fruit beer fan, so I don't really do fruity beers at all. It's just not my... I don't have a taste for it. 
Is it good? If I could choose one aircraft to have on X-Plane 11, what would it be? Uh, whatever I'm flying right now. Anything. I don't really get too wishy-washy. Like, I'd like to see more biz jets. Um, but, I, so here's the thing. I'm not really an airplane guy. Uh, I don't know a lot about airplanes. I don't know. I mean, I'm learning about them, obviously. But I'm not the kind of guy who's going to sit there and be like, that's a C-47 with the three Pratt & Whitney engines on it. And it does this and this and it's got this horse. Like, I'm not a walking encyclopedia at all. Like, I look at a plane, I'm like, hey, it's got an engine on it, eh? I think it's a piston. Nah, maybe it's a turboprop. I don't know, man. Got a spinny thing on the front. Like, I'm not, a, I'm not an airplane guy. So, I don't really have a good answer for what airplane would you like to see in the sim because I don't really care. Like, I know a few that I like. Like, I love the TBM. I love turboprops. Um, and I think that most everything is pretty well represented. You know, we're, we're all we're really missing are some some sort of like small to mid size uh private jets things like that um because our you know air, the, the, airliners are covered small planes are covered now we're getting sort of these these turbo props these these you know these private commuters and whatnot that are covered so it's it's really just the, the private jets that we're looking for to uh to fill a niche <laughs> Drinking a warthog, just jumping in a beer for a week. Dude, I, yeah, right? United 417, Haley, Altimeter 3042. I swear to you, this is a real thing. Uh, let's see if I can find this. I was in the last four, United 417. United 417, I feel advice when you have Haley, weather, and the price request. I was United 417. United Fusion, put a heavy, go ahead. Almost got it. Maybe. A10 Warthog, double IPA. Maybe I can't find it. It was in a can. It was actually... I, I, had, I had one of these on stream a little while back. Um... Definitely was called A10 Warthog. It's crazy. I don't. I don't understand why it was called A10 Warthog. That's why I bought it. It was okay beer. It wasn't you know anything to write home about. But um, I bought it because of course I had to. Why well, fly the Metar A380 if it ever comes out? I don't really think too much about planes that are in the future. I focus on what we're flying right now. We got a lot of good planes to fly. Um, if all we do is spend our time thinking about what's coming next, then we're just never going to enjoy what we have. That's part of the reason why that I why I didn't do any streaming of this plane while it was in development, because eventually it's going to come out and it's going to be a great product. And you know what? It came out. It's a great product, and I'm not burned out on it. So that's that's why I tend to, I tend to let the pre-release stuff. Other people can cover that if they want to, but I'd rather cover a finished product. Still need a better premiere and a, uh, still need a premiere and a better Piaggio. Yeah. G1000 Cessna two-way that isn't trash is another one I explain needs. Yeah, I, I give you that. You sure you didn't print the label yourself? I don't know. Maybe I did. You have no proof. Can I show the cockpit? Okay. Uh, yes, for 17, okay, information, Oscar, and uh, request NDB, Demi Alpha, or Friedman. The cockpit. There you go. United 417, Roger, Alpha approach. Report uh, final approach fix inbound. Could uh, NDB DME Alpha and we report uh, final approach. Uh, you probably never see a Honda Jet either. I think they, they keep a pretty, they, they keep pretty, um, pretty close tabs on that too. Because I think there was a Honda Jet that was in like that freeware uh, flight sim. And I'm pretty sure it got shut down. We're going to Aspen. On my tombstone, there will be an Anheuser Busch logo. <laughs> JC Films, good to see you, Patrick. Welcome aboard. How is the T16000 thr throttle? I had no issue with it. A couple times I've used it. Fusio Da, good to see it. The cockpit is too hot. It is too hot in cabin, sir. G1000 
to the carbon fiber table. Uh, it's kind of excessive. Like, how much do you think this thing costs? Trule had to maintain one seven thousand four four on the altimeter seven tickets here. Like plan Trule seven thousand. And we will call it two and a half degrees, fourteen hundred feet per minute on this one. It's gonna be fifteen minutes till top of descent now. So we set 7,000 as the altitude restriction at Truel. And then that brought up the VNAV profile page down here with the active waypoint 7,000 at Truel. We could set either a target feet per minute or a, uh, uh, a degree of, of descent. Uh, target feet per minute is kind of weird because as the plane accelerates, like the plane gets all kind of funky. Um, I had a problem. I've had a problem using it. Oh, shoot. We're actually... We're way above. We should start down now. Okay. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. We need 1,600 feet per minute to get down. Oops! All right. So, let's do... Um, uh, 17,000. That says bottom of descent, not top of descent. And you, and then you... We'll go ahead and do 2,000 feet per minute. So it's telling us that we need 1,600 feet per minute right now, 1,700 to get down. So if I do 2,000 feet per minute, I'll catch up to our, our path here, or our vertical path. So I'll activate VNAV as well. So I'll select vertical path. What's going to happen is this thing should descend in vertical speed mode until it reaches the vertical path, and then it'll pick up that vertical, vertical path and take that down, and that'll have us crossing Truel then at 17,000 feet. Assuming I've done everything correctly. Does it have SIDS and STARS? Yep. $4 million plate, tables, peanuts. That's true. That's 100% true, yeah. Uh, cup holder still mod on the cockpit. Yep. Oop. As is the... Oh, crap. Nope, 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 nope. Manual gear handle. Manual gear uh, extraction there. TB in the world's fastest single engine turboprop. Now I'd like to see the Avanti in the world's fastest dual engine turboprop. That'd be pretty cool. High and fast into Aspen. We'd have it no other way. We're still 100 miles out of Aspen, so we're fine. Like, he's getting us down pretty quickly for Truel, but. It's all right. All right, that vertical deviation. So we're 3,000 feet above the glide path. Or not the glide path, sorry, above the, above the path that it wants. Bringing it down. We're doing all right here. No. Oh. Hey. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. I just saw a huge problem. It should be 17,000 at Truel, not 7,000. You guys are letting me down on that one. All right, so yeah. So I could have waited to start down. <laughs> I'm doing the math. I'm like, man, this doesn't really check out, but okay. Now well, we'll just keep a nice easy descent going since we've already started our way down. Controller is probably like, what the hell is he doing? Mm 
<laughs> if Ty can land a 319 on the opposite. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> How did the scenery look up in Kali Spell from KGPI? It's pretty good, man. It looked pretty good up there. Decimal point, dude. Always kills you. 7,000 would have put us in a mountain pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep the minus 500 to safe base in front of ATC. Uh -huh. Don't judge me, bro. <laughs> All I have to do is 500 feet per minute down. We're just taking our time. My pre in. Thanks for your hard work, Total Rico. <laughs> Playing pens can see again. Coast pilot, welcome aboard. Math for the win, right? See? The math did it. FCC Mac, happy Friday. We're flying Miss Daisy tonight. Don't judge, Brandon. Don't you judge. <laughs> it's a lot going on right now, okay? direct. <laughs> Maintain 9,000. Expect flight level 250. Five minutes after departure. Departure frequency 127.4. Right, sorry. Pay attention to you guys again. Recommend descend speed or descend power. Last question. I think usually you descend like 1,500 feet per minute is probably a good number for this. 2.5 degrees seems to work pretty well. The descent is less important. Like, whatever you think you can maintain. Two thirty, two forty in the descent, whatever power signal it gets you. Makes sense. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're, we're descending a little bit on the slow side, but it's okay. Make sure my uh, make sure my indicated airspeed has miraculously failed again. Yeah, I think we're still good. All right, two minutes till top of descent. <laughs> Five Mike Whiskey got the best approach. One, two, three point eight. See ya. Alright, that'll be us next too. So five Mike Whiskey got his. We'll wait for ours. Two hundred and twenty knots, even in a dive for a single engine turbo pop is pretty fast. Ah, oh, we can get this Mike thing going faster approach. too. Once I get this thing into a proper descent that's not five hundred feet per minute. Okay, Aspen weather, uh, two zero zero eight knots, ten miles with a clear sky, five degrees Celsius, ton of three zero four six. So we got the weather. Let's get a approach ready to go here. Four seventeen and inbound final. I'll we'll just fly the RNAP approach. Be the easiest thing to do. I want to five point six in it, four seventeen. Hey Max, what approach did you request? You're still in here. I assume it wasn't the visual. All right, so we got our visual, our vertical path here coming in. So we should capture that soon. 
United 1540 Heavy, turn left heading 100, vector 4 approach. Can you fast forward? I go to work in 10 minutes. <laughs> Mega what? how you doing? Mega what? I'm literally showing 12 minutes till we get there. So it's probably going to be like 15. <laughs> Better throw it on in the car. Careful the truck. I got my eye on it. Don't worry. I've been bumping it back. Once we hit this proper descent here in a few, in a few seconds. About half a minute or so. All right, here it comes. We'll see if it captures. What weather system do you use? Uh, so I'm using uh, default cloud textures, uh, and I'm using FS Global Real Weather to actually generate the weather. Did it pick it up? Nah, it didn't pick it up, did it? This happened to me earlier, too. DBM 7 Tango Sierra, contact Austin approach, 123.8. 23.8, 7 Tango Sierra. Let's hit VNAV again. United 1540 Heavy, turn left heading 090. 090, United 1540 Heavy. Yeah, this happened to me earlier too, where like it was in vertical speed mode and it wouldn't pick up that path. I am a professional, that's right. What am I professional at? Eh, something. Who knows? Aspen approach TBM seven one seven Tango Sierra flight level two two three descending one seven thousand Truel. We got the weather at Aspen. TBM seven one seven Tango Sierra Aspen approach. Don't just say approach your class. Uh, what's the guy in front of us doing? TBM seven Tango Sierra. Don't expect the uh, rolling fork visual approach on one five from red table. Okay, we'll expect that seven Tango Sierra. That's totally not what I expected Max to do. Roaring Fork visual from Red Table. Okay. TBM five Mike Whiskey across Red Table at a maintain one three thousand. So we stay to the west of the ridge, to the west of the one six three radial, and then make our way in. Even better, thirteen at Red Table, Father. Yeah, we're looking for the Roaring Fork River on our way into uh, into the airport. Actually, this is the pr a pretty easy one. So if you want to see the approach, here's where it's at. We're coming in at Red Table, and we'll bring this thing down to 1-5. Now we're on vertical path. Interesting. I'm gonna start to speak a little higher too on the way down. Yeah. At least we are familiar with the manual gear extension procedure. Uh huh. If that gear screws up, we know how to fix it. Now, it may collapse again, but we know how to fix it. Hope, let's hope the Inside airplane won't be roaringly on fire all the way from Red Table. Uh-huh, uh-huh. visual approach, left, contact Monterey Tower, 118.4. visual straight left and over to Tower, 1540 heavy. All right. United 1540 heavy, Monterey Tower, and with the left, good to land. Go three zero four six. TBM five Mike Whiskey report red table mountain in sight. We got it in sight, Pat Mike Whiskey. TBM five Mike Whiskey clear the roaring fork. Red table, table one, mountain. Clear the roaring fork to one five. TBM five Whiskey. Probably be that guy right there is my guess. That's where we're pointed at. I don't know. She might be that one over there. Nothing like flying a visual approach that you've never, uh, yeah, haven't prepared for at all. Don't know the area, whatever. Was definitely not expecting Max to request a visual approach, to be honest.
Reminds me of a joke asked on some C-130 check ride. How many cranks does it take to manually extend the landing gear? One crank, lots of turns, though. <laughs> That's good. I approve. That's a go. And for his next trick, Cat Shitter will take the TPM into St. Bart's. Uh-huh. I'm all over that. Roaring Fork River is a gold metal waters fishing area. I don't even know what that means. I'm assuming that means that there's good fishing there. Okay, direct red table. So we're going to fly over an 11,000 foot peak. That must be Red Table. Oh yeah, Red Table Mountain right ahead. Oh yeah, that, that's it right there. So that's Red Table Mountain. So basically slide down there and then just follow the, uh, follow the river and that makes sense. Okay, I got this. This is no problem. Shouldn't be a big deal. TBM Mass 7 Tango, Sierra Cross Red Table at the maintained 13000. Red Table 13000, 7 Tango Sierra. Alright, 13,000 feet. We'll go vertical speed down. Just guesstimated here. Four flights tell me I need 1,400 feet per minute, so we'll make it 1,500. Need descent. Oh, sorry, I missed your question on the ortho. Yeah, I, I, I use ortho for XP, but like fork boy stuff is where you'd want to go now. Makes it super easy. Hey, Randy Beans. Good to see you, man. We're just coming up on uh, Aspen here. Making our way in. TBM uh, 5 Mike with the Aspen Tower, and we want 5 foot to land. Wind 190 at 8. Okay. Tower's 1885. Is that ready to go? TBM uh, 7 Tango Sierra, report Red Table Mountain in sight. Uh, Red Table Mountain's in sight, 7 Tango Sierra. TBM 7 Tango Sierra, clear the running forks visual, and we want 5 approach. Good Roaring Forks Visual 1-5 Approach, 7 Tango Sierra. Uh. United 417, taxi to parking via Bravo, remain this frequency, have a good night. Awfully unstable there, that was weird. Hmm. I'm gonna try turning this off real quick and see what it does for me. Oh yeah, I see what you mean, Toto. Oh yeah, that's bouncy. Yep, okay. I believe you now. I guess the stiffening makes sense here because we are going pretty quick. Thousand five hundred or higher recommended. Get that speed back now. Let's see, that's the bridge over there. We want to go around. Right. 
Tower 1835, 7 Tango Sierra. That's 118.8585. 1885, 7 Tango Sierra. Aspen Tower, TBM 717, Tango Sierra, Roaring Forks, Visual 15. TBM 717, Tango Sierra, Aspen Tower, runway 15, Cloud 1, number 2, following ATBM on 2 1 final. Landing gear. Landing gear. Good land, Romy, one nine number two, seven take us here. Maverick, it's our reserve, Bravo Charlie, uh, ready for departure, short of one two. Seven bus, seven zero, Bravo Charlie, I'll take seven, runway, cross runway one two, runway eight, line up and wait. There it is, landing got the gear. airport in sight. Right, cross one two, approach runway eight, line up and wait, zero, Bravo Charlie. Just a little bit of power there. Still look fine. Do not need to descend quite that aggressively. We make our way around this ridge here, and then we follow the river in. Avoiding, of course, the noise-sensitive areas. Because people who pay good money for their homes shouldn't have to be bothered by airplanes. The run by zero Bravo Charlie, turn right heading 170, runway 8, quick for takeoff, wind 100 at 10. All right, right, 170, runway A, cleared to go, Zerg, Bravo, Charlie. I think I did this wrong, but whatever. I've never actually flown the Roaring Forks visual, so this is interesting. That might have been the ridge I was supposed to hug. But whatever, I got the valley, it's all that matters. Point myself at the airport and go. All right, let's get lights. Good. My eyes are drying out. Cause why? Of course. I think of Dumb and Dumb when I think of Aspen. I've never actually watched all of Dumb and Dumber. Okay, let's go one notch of flaps. Let's start bringing her down. And alpha to the gate. 1540 heavy. Now that's literally called the ridge over there. Okay, bring the gear down. And speed for the full flaps is 122. Should be the white arc. One white, two red, one white, three red. Nope, it's two and two. Happies are happy, as Max would say. Just bleed that speed off. Let's go ahead and kill the odd damper. Oh, it was already killed. Box full. Look for 90 knots. Number zero, Bravo Charlie, contact departure. Day for zero, Bravo Charlie. All right. Three down, three green. Flaps down and indicated. Lights are on. Uh, yep. There's been received. We're landing. About 90, 95 knots. This might be my easiest approach into Aspen yet. Not doing it at night in a freaking jet. Terrain ahead. Too low. Terrain. 
too low terrain terrain ahead too low terrain too low obstacle ahead pull up pull up too low terrain boy we made it end of the ramp seven take a zero have a great night mm-hmm oops find ourselves a nice parking spot here Do I fly bigger planes? Absolutely, man. In fact, I usually fly bigger planes. Tonight's one of the exceptions. Let's park between the two jets here. Go watch that landing again, too. That's what we call tonight. And it's good for me. All right, so I know that's set. Let's do a proper shutdown checklist this time. Don't care about that. We did all that. We did all that. Well, most of that. We did most of that too. Uh, airframe de ice switch prop de ice. So we turn the heats off. Let's go ahead and knock it over to high idle. Inertial separate. Oh, yeah, we didn't turn the inertial separator on. Well, you know, left, right, bleed switch. Da, 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 da. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Turn him off. Uh, park brake is on. ECS bleed switch off. Reset. EC switch off. Light idle for two minutes. Taxi lights off. AP switch can come off. Uh, throttle to cut off. Good, good, good. All exterior light switches off. We'll go left to right here. AP can come off. Auxiliary boost pump can come off. Ignition can turn off. That's already off. Gen's already, or Gen's now off. Battery can come off. And the crash bar off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Aspen. We made it. We're here. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, check out a replay. Disconnected. And then we will call it a night. Uh, how FPS heavy is a five-factor E three twenty? It's sort of middle of the road. Okay. That's all right. I lost it there at the like I lost it there as soon as I landed. She sort of veered to the left and I wasn't expecting that. So something to keep in mind. As we fly this thing and land this thing more, we'll get used to some of those nuances. I'll take it. One more. We'll call it a night. Look how little the 
ailerons are on that thing. Holy crap. <laughs> off the runway it's fine don't worry about it guys all right folks that was a good time we should uh should i put the thing on I should probably put the thing on shouldn't i uh nope mm, payload tires and chops we'll set when the engine's cooled off pedo wicks statics close 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 Pack her up. I want to thank you all so much for coming out tonight. You were a bit side loaded. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Landing gear stayed on. <laughs> it's acceptable. Okay. Uh, Art of Tyrant, how you doing, Rod? Hello and goodbye. Oh my gosh. My contacts are so dry. Oh, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. We'll be back with some more Forza on uh, Monday, Monday or Tuesday, depending on what my schedule looks like. I'll let you guys know. And, uh, we will probably be flying. We might be flying this tomorrow. I might, I might, I might fire one up tomorrow afternoon to fly this thing around. Uh, depends on again what my schedule looks like. So, guys, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Have a great night. Enjoy your weekend, and we will see you soon. Toodles.